afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Joe Lee Griffin Field as we get set for game two of our season opening series between the UNC Asheville Bulldogs and the Sanford Bulldogs. I'm John McAfoos alongside Blake Gardner, set to bring you all the action this afternoon. And the series started with a 6-2 win for Sanford last night. There were a lot of positives all around the diamond for the Bulldogs, including a lot of new faces. Absolutely. New faces contributing across the field for the Dogs. It started on the mound with Jesse McCord, who gave the Dogs a solid five and two-thirds of scoreless baseball back on last night's contest. UNC Asheville did scratch one across in the sixth, but it was more newcomers who came to bat for the Dogs in the bottom of the seventh, exploding for a six-spot Four straight run scoring hits, including the exclamation point. A two-run home run from freshman Ayrton Schaefer that really put the offensive performance on display. Dogs ended up with a 6-2 win and can go for a series win on this Saturday afternoon. And trying to follow up yesterday's win will be Mikhail Kozinov, the senior right-hander for the Bulldogs. He'll be going up against righty Ryan Tapp, making his first ever start for the Asheville Bulldogs. Yeah, Mikhail Kozinov making another start. He was a guy the Dogs tried to work into the starting rotation midway through last year. On the other side, Ryan Tapp, a guy who has not pitched for UNC Asheville since the 2015 season. He gets a chance to get back out there and make his first career college baseball start. Should be a fun one, should be an intriguing one. We're looking forward to calling it here at Jolie Griffin Field. And we're getting all set for the anthem here, so we will take a quick break. We'll come back with starting lineups and first pitch. You're watching Sanford Baseball on the Sanford Sports Network. These are the student athletes. This is where they train. These are their homes. This is where they become Rhodes Scholars and academic All-Americans. These are the athletes they've always admired. This is where champions are crowned and moments are made. This is the Southern Conference. Game day brings out the best in all of us. Every day is game day. The road to Omaha begins in Greenville, South Carolina. The Southern Conference Baseball Tournament comes to Floor Field May 23rd through 28th. Enjoy some great college baseball with a trip to the NCAAs on the line in a city the New York Times calls one of the top places to go in 2017. Get your tickets to the tournament and book your rooms in Yeah, That Greenville today. Experience the games. Explore the city. And welcome back to Joe Lee Griffin Field. We are just minutes away from first pitch. Sanford defense on the field. We'll take a look at the starting lineups here for game two of this three-game series for UNC Asheville. Pretty similar to last night. Carmine Pagano, the shortstop, leading off. Cole Harris in the two-hole. Brandon Langford, the third baseman. Their star, Joe Tijan, batting cleanup, playing center field. Danny Wilson at first base. Chris Trost and Andrew Friedholm each move up one slot in the lineup, and Kyle Carruthers moves down to the eighth spot. He was at the six hole last night, and batting ninth, the second baseman, Derek Smith. On the mound, as we mentioned in the pregame show, Ryan Tapp. And for Sanford, an identical lineup to last night. TJ Dixon leading off playing center field. Freshman Brandon Fryman at short. Troy Dixon, the brother of TJ, at second base. Batting third, Austin Edens in the cleanup hole at first base. Jordan Fusey in right field, batting fifth. Anthony Mulrine, one of the freshmen that came up with a big hit last night, will be behind the plate. Ayrton Schaefer, another freshman with a big hit last night. He'll be the designated hitter again. Ryan Crockett at third base and Kevin Williams Jr. in left field. And the starting pitcher for Sanford on the mound right now will be Mikhail Kozinov. Those are your starting lineups presented by America's First Federal Credit Union. Umpires today behind home plate, Terrence Mobley. Down the first baseline, it's C.J. Burdett. And third base umpire will be Ricky Powell. Two of our three umpires returning from Friday night as we get a look at Mikhail Kozinov making his first start of this 2017 season. Kozinov made nine starts last year, pitched 41 innings as a newcomer to the Bulldogs roster. Guy who was working back from an arm injury. The Dogs tried to work him back slowly into the rotation. He didn't make... His first start till March 22nd, and even then it was two innings and a midweek start against Jacksonville State. He made his first start where he went five or more innings April 19th against 
Alabama A&M in the first game of a doubleheader that day. Went five innings, gave up just one run and struck out six. And from then on, he made four more starts in the year. Game two of the UNCG series, he went six innings. Then ETSU, three innings at the Citadel, six and two thirds. And then his season high last year, seven innings in game two of the VMI series. Seven innings of shutout baseball where he struck out seven and walked just two. Overall, a four and one record for Kozinov last year. ERA at 5.23. Struck out 37 and walked 13. He slots in to the Saturday spot and is ready to start game two for the Dogs in this opening series of 2017 against UNC Asheville. Yeah, he'll be a big part of their rotation this year for sure and uh, one of many returning faces in this uh, Sanford Bulldogs staff. And prior to coming to Sanford, he actually uh, pitched at Sneed State Community College for a couple of years. He was their number one starter there. As you said, they took some time working him back last year and now he's going to be asked to to be a, a weekend starter for them. So it's uh, it's going to be a big season for him, hopefully, and he's going to get them underway here as Carmine Pagano, leadoff hitter, sophomore shortstop, steps into the box for UNC Asheville. Pagano last night on base twice, two for five with a run scored. He struck out twice as well. And he takes that one low and away, and it's... Quickly 2-0 on Pagano. Kazanov delivers, and this one is high and tight, but it's going to be at the top of the strike zone, a college strike. So 2-1 and one to Carmine Pagano. And Pagano puts a drive into this one. This is way back on the run as Kevin Williams Jr. He's at the wall. Is he going to have room? He does, and he makes a phenomenal catch at the wall. The athleticism by Kevin Williams Jr. in full effect right there off the bat. I thought it might get out. It dies at the wall, but Williams had a read on that ball the whole way. Yeah, Kevin Williams really had to get a great jump to work towards the left field line down there. Did a great job tracking the baseball, knowing exactly where he was in relation to the left field wall, and times his jump just in time to snag it off the green wall and left. An outstanding defensive start for the Dogs on this Saturday afternoon. So some strong contact by Pagano goes for nothing as Williams robs him of extra bases. And Kyle Harris comes in, swings in first pitch, hit to Fryman. He takes it on one hop, fires across the diamond just in time to retire Cole Harris and quickly two down for Kazanov. Good play by Fryman working towards the six hole that time. Had to rely on the arm strength a little bit. Didn't really charge that baseball, but fielded it cleanly and was able to set his feet and make the throw across the diamond in time. And early on, Mikhail Kozinov getting some good defensive help from the outfield and the infield respectively through the first two hitters of the Asheville lineup. Brandon Langford, third baseman, comes in now. He was two for five last night. He drove in one of the two Asheville runs. And he takes a strike at the top of the zone. The top of the order really did all the damage for UNC Asheville last night. All five of their hits came from the top three hitters. Pagano with two, Harris with one, and Langford with two. Langford takes one outside and even the count at one and one. Kevin Williams, who made that spectac spectacular catch in left field, one of the many new faces on this Sanford Bulldogs team. This one is fouled off of his foot. And one and two for Langford. for just a freshman from Moxville, North Carolina. 6-1-2-15. And he's going to look at a call third strike at the top of the zone. So a nice quick inning from Mikhail Kozinov. He goes 1-2-3. Sanford offense will come to the plate for the first time today as we head to the bottom of the first. You're watching Sanford Baseball on the Sanford Sports Network. don't make better pizza. Our people and ingredients make better pizza. Get Papa John's Ultimate Meats Pizza with five different meats on pan or large crust, only $11. Well, more than a pizza company, or a pizza family. Papa John's.
And we're back here at Joe Lee Griffin Field as the Sanford offense comes to the plate for the first time this afternoon. Sun coming out now. It was overcast most of the afternoon, but now it's turning into a pretty nice day. Earlier in the week, we were uh, a little fearful we would get some rain, but thankfully the forecast has turned out to be okay. And no rain in the immediate forecast. We should be able to get through this game without any, any kind of weather interference. Ryan Tapp on the mound for the UNC Asheville Bulldogs. It'll be the first start of his Asheville career. He made 18 appearances as a freshman all out of the bullpen, and that was two years ago. Last year he redshirted as a freshman. 17 earned runs allowed in 17.2 innings, 17 walks as well, so almost a walk in inning, 16 Ks. Tap a big right-hander from UNC Asheville, the biggest guy on this roster, every bit of six foot eight, 240 pounds from Monroe, North Carolina, Sun Valley High School. He took a red shirt last year, so he's a red shirt sophomore airing this 2017 season. Going across the diamond, Harris in left, Tijan in center, Carruthers in right, left center and right field. And then in the infield, Lankford at third, Pagano at short, Smith at second, Danny Wilson the first baseman, and for the second straight game behind home plate is the head coach's son, sophomore Andrew Friedholm, will be the battery mate for today's starting pitcher for Asheville to try and tap. And it'll be T.J. Dixon stepping into the box to lead off for the Bulldogs, the athletic center fielder. Still looking for his first hit of the season. Last night he was 0 for 4. Did score one run. One of just two seniors, two senior position players in this starting lineup for Samford, along with Austin Edens. And Dixon takes a call for a strike. Tap delivers the 0-1, and TJ takes a big swing and a miss. Got a little piece of it, but it's fouled back into the catcher's glove. So it's 0-2 against Dixon. Dixon's had a very good Sanford career thus far. Last year, his junior year, he hit 299 and scored 54 runs. And here he fouls one off into the home dugout. Count remains at 0-2. No preseason accolades for TJ Dixon. I think that surprised a few people. Um, it may have even surprised him. He might be using that as a little motivation. He gets set for the 0-2 pitch, and he lines this one right up the middle, and there's a base hit for TJ Dixon, and he's on base with his first hit of the season. Takes a wide turnaround first, but gets back in time before the throw. So TJ Dixon leads things off for Sanford with a single up the middle. Yeah, good two-strike approach there from Dixon. Got a fastball out over the plate. Probably caught a little bit too much of the plate if you're Ryan Tapp trying to work against Dixon with two strikes. And TJ pokes it right back through the box, exactly what you're supposed to do when you're choking up and trying to put it in play. And TJ finds himself aboard for the first time in this 2017 season. Brandon Fryman now stepping into the box with Dixon at first. Fryman one for three yesterday with a double and a run score, and he's going to put down a bunt. Tap's got it. He'll throw to first in time, but a sacrifice bunt for Brandon Fryman gets T.J. Dixon over to second base. Second time in as many games we've seen Fryman lay down a sacrifice bunt. Saw him do just the same thing last night back in the bottom of the seventh. Actually reached on an error on that sacrifice bunt attempt, but that time he gets it down, moves Dixon into scoring position, and gives... Troy Dixon, an RBI look early in this contest. Yeah, and you mentioned that error. That was kind of a, a little bit of a game changer last night. That could have been the second out of the inning. Instead, uh, it kind of led to a, a rally. And that's the inning where Sanford ended up putting a sixth spot on the board. So it's Troy Dixon stepping into the box. He was 0 for 2 last night, but he reached base three times. He was hit, and he walked twice. It was a scary moment when he got hit in the head last night, but thankfully he, uh, he shook it off pretty quickly and hustled on down the first base line. Not quite a few guys get hit yesterday. Four hit batsmen between the two squads yesterday. And two of them in the head or face area too, which is never a sight you'd like to see. Tap to deliver the 0-1 pitch, and this one's high and outside, even the count at 1-1. One, one. So you've got speed on second base in TJ Dixon. You've got speed at the plate in his brother Troy Dixon. Sanford looking to carve out an early lead today. Yesterday, they didn't score until the seventh inning. Here's the pitch to Troy, and that one is just a little bit outside, and it's two to one, two and one. Good frame behind home plate by Freed Home, but our home plate umpire today, Terrence Mobley, wasn't buying it. Two of the three umpires from last night in play this afternoon, Mobley and Powell, the new guy, C.J. Burdett's the first base umpire. He's in the middle of the diamond right now. 
And a two, one pitch to Dixon is skied a mile into the air. It's on the infield. It's gonna be the catcher calling off tap to make the catch. So coming in and putting him away on the infield is Andrew Friedholm. So Troy Dixon can't get his brother TJ over to third base and it'll be up to Austin Edens to try to drive in that first run of the game for Sanford. That's great hustle there from Friedholm. That's a tough play as that ball is working its way back towards the middle of the diamond. The best guy, the guy who probably had a, the best shot at it was Tap. But Tap was called off by Friedholm. Ideally, you want Langford or Wilson coming in from the corners to call off your catcher since they're working back towards home plate. But Friedholm is able to get under that baseball and retire Dixon for out number two. And the power hitting Edens comes to the plate for the first time today. Two for four last night with a run scored. See if he gets anything good to hit here. They do have first base open, so they can't elect to, to give him a free 90 feet if they don't want to face him in this situation. They're going to pitch low and away for ball one. And I'm sure that Tap's going to be awfully careful about what he throws to Edens right here. Edens, the leading RBI man, returning from last year's squad. 59 RBIs for Austin Edens last year, second on the club, trailing only Heath Quinn, who knocked in a Sanford record 77. Dixon with his lead at second, and this one is at the same location, low and outside in the dirt, and quickly 2-0 and on Edens. Jordan Fusey awaiting on deck if his opportunity was to arise in this first inning. Austin had a handful of at-bats last night with runners in scoring position. He takes this one outside and it's 3-0 and and it does look like they're gonna pitch around him. So 3-0 and to Austin Edens, TJ Dixon on second base. Two outs right now, Ryan Tapp delivers the 3-0 pitch and that one is in there for a college strike. Good spot there from Tap on the outside corner. Probably aiming for that same pitch here on three and one. Don't want to make a mistake over the heart of the plate. And if you lose Edens, no harm, no foul. You come out and get Fusey. And here is the three one pitch. And Austin takes a hack at that one. And it's fouled down the right field line. Good crowd here again today. Down the, down the line, full on the right side. Not quite as many people as there were last night, but it's early. It might pick up a little bit. So also, also a men's basketball game afterwards, and that might draw some yeah. people here as well. Absolutely. Had just shy of 1,000 here last night for Friday's opener. Edens takes another hack, and this one's back into the netting, a foul ball. So it remains a full count. You mentioned basketball tonight, 6 p.m. tip against VMI. Can still time to stop by any Birmingham area academy sports and outdoors. Pick up your free ticket voucher that gets you into tonight's Southern Conference showdown in the Hanna Center. And a full count pitch to Edens, and this one is outside, and that's ball four, so Tap does lose him there. But as you said, no harm, no foul. I don't think they're going to be too upset about that. And now if you're Tap, you just got to get Fusey. And if you're Fusey, you're coming up with a big opportunity here with two on and two out. Yeah, that's a great take by Edens there, three and two. And that was back-to-back -back breaking balls from Ryan Tap as he tried to put him away. Edens does his job to lay off and works his way aboard, extends the inning, and let's see if Jordan Fusey now can take advantage of the RBI chance. Fusey could get a lot of chances like this. We talked a little bit about that last night, but there are going to be some times this year where Edens is going to get pitched around, and it's going to be up to Fusey to try to knock in some runs hitting behind him. Here's going to take one inside. And it's 1-0. and Fusey did come through with a... RBI single last night in the bottom of the seventh. A little flare in the left. Was part of that four straight hit parade in the bottom of the seventh that broke this contest open. But the team in batting average a season ago with 364. Fairly small sample size, just 44 at bats, but he did also have a 481 on base percentage. Here's the 1 0 pitch, and that's line in the right. And coming in and making a catch as he falls to the ground is right fielder Kyle Carruthers. A nice catch. Hard hit ball by Fusey, just right at Carruthers. So no run score as they leave two on base and leave one in scoring position. We'll head to the top of the second, 0-0 from Joe Lee Griffin Field. You're watching Sanford Baseball on the Sanford Sports Network. Human beings can be hungry anytime they please. Maybe you messed up and didn't eat enough lunch. Perhaps dinner is very far away. It doesn't matter. 
Come to Arby's and solve your hunger problems with dollar sliders, cookies, small size fries, drinks, and shakes, each for a dollar from two to five. P.M. Not A.M. Arby's, we have the meats. At Express Oil Change and Tire Engineers, we believe in service. Maintenance service, tire service, repair service, and most importantly, customer service. We believe in treating our customers with respect and integrity while offering all the services you need for your car. Most of all, at Express Oil Change and Tire Engineers, we believe in keeping cars on the road, keeping families safe, and keeping you coming back whenever the need arises. And welcome back to Joe Lee Griffin Field as we hit the top of the second inning. Scoreless at zero right now, it'll be Joe Tejan, Danny Wilson, and Chris Troost coming up this inning for the UNC Asheville Bulldogs. Sanford left two on base there in the bottom of the first, and Jordan Fusey comes up and rips a hard hit line drive to right field, it's just right on a line, right to where Kyle Carruthers was standing. So two left on for Samford, one in scoring position. They did have that issue last night a little bit with leaving runners on base, especially in scoring position. And obviously if you're, you're Coach Dunn or anyone in that Samford dugout, you're hoping they maybe capitalize on some of those situations a little earlier than they did last night. Yeah, dogs were over their first eight with runners in scoring position last night before four straight hits in the seventh inning. So it'll be D Joe Tejan leading off for Asheville. He's going to take a called strike. Last night, Tijan 0 for 3. He is the big bat on this team. Preseason, first team, all Big South. One of the top prospects overall on the Big South. And he takes another called strike. And quickly, Kazanov ahead in the count, 0 and 2 on Joe Tijan. Tijan, a senior, one of three seniors in the starting lineup today for Asheville. And the 0-2 pitches. Outside for a ball. A few of the Sanford fans really wanted that one. Good spot there from Kozinov 0-2. Mulrine set up just off the outside corner. Kozinov hits the glove, but just off the plate. And this one has popped up on the infield. Dixon coming in, calling off Edens, and it'll be Troy Dixon putting him away. So one quick out for Kozinov. Good pitch there from Kozinov. 1-2. I don't think he meant to work the inside part of the plate. Might have missed his spot a little bit. But anyway, ties up Tejan inside, who... Fist one up in the air. Troy Dixon able to call Austin Edens off and make the play for out number one. Danny Wilson now steps to the plate. Reached base twice last night. Two walks. It was 0 for 2. And he takes a strike on the outside corner. And quickly Kazanov jumping ahead again. He's pounding the strike zone right now, getting ahead of batters. Yeah, he fell behind Pagano to start the contest. Since then, four straight first pitch strikes. That one looked to be in a similar location, but I guess a little bit outside, so it's one and one. This one is grounded over to third base and across the diamond, but a high throw, a nice snag by Edens to retire Danny Wilson there. The, uh, the throw was a little off from Ryan Crockett. He fielded it, and, and it was Edens had to throw kind of his body across the bag, but a a nice play by Austin Edens to retire and, and save Crockett from getting an error. Yeah, you called it right. Good adjustment there by Edens to work up the line and make the catch, adjusting the foot, the feet a little bit there. First couple of times we've seen Edens in the field in this opening contest. He was the designated hitter all of last year. Chris Trost comes up and he swings at the first pitch and coming in, Kevin Williams Jr. in left field. He's going to put it away. So another very quick inning for Mikhail Kozinov. One, two, three. He's retired all six batters he's faced so far. We'll head to the bottom of the second. Zero to zero. You're watching Sanford Baseball on the Sanford Sports Network.
The road to Omaha begins in Greenville, South Carolina. The Southern Conference Baseball Tournament comes to Floor Field May 23rd through 28th. Enjoy some great college baseball with a trip to the NCAAs on the line in a city the New York Times calls one of the top places to go in 2017. Get your tickets to the tournament and book your rooms in Yeah, That Greenville today. Experience the games. Explore the city. Back here at Joe Lee Griffin Field, we're all set for the bottom of the second. Leading off for Sanford will be Anthony Mulrine, the freshman, followed by Ayrton Schaefer and Ryan Crockett. So all three freshmen coming up this bottom of the second inning. Fans with a brand new season of Sanford Bulldog baseball underway, there's still time to get your season tickets. For just $30, you can get the full home game schedule, including dates with the Auburn Tigers and Alabama Crimson Tide, among some other big teams, including Indiana from the Big Ten. They'll be here the first weekend in March. You can look for details online at SanfordSports.com slash tickets or call the Sanford Ticket Office at 205-726-3647. That's 205-726-DOGS. So Anthony Mulrine, the freshman, steps in. He came up with one of the big hits last night. It was an RBI double to dead center. Knocked in a couple runs and... It was followed up by Ayrton Schaefer's two-run homer that made it a 6-1 to game. Asheville would come back and scratch out one more run for the final score of 6-2. to two. He Takes that one up high, and he's ahead of the count 2-0 and oh right now against Ryan Tapp. Well, it's only been one game, but you can't say enough about how the, the freshmen have looked. They look confident. That one's on the outside corner for a strike. They all looked good last night. Fryman made some great plays at short. Mulrine and Schaefer coming up with big hits. Kevin Williams, he's not a freshman, but a new face for Sanford, has hit the ball hard last night, made a great play in left today. This one is skied out to right field. Carruthers on the run in foul territory. He's got enough room just in front of the tarp to retire Anthony Mulrine for the first out. Great hustle there from Kyle Carruthers. That ball's tailing away from him and towards the tarp. And Brothers took one quick look at where he was, knowing there's an abundance of foul ground here at Jolie Griffin Field, and he's able to get over towards the wall and make the catch to retire Mulrine for the first out in the second. And it'll be Ayrton Schaefer, designated hitter, coming up. As we mentioned, one for three last night with a home run. And swing and foul off the first pitch. Struck out in his, and two other at-bats last night. He also walked, so he did reach base twice, and one of the two biggest hits of the game, along with Mulrine's double, was Ayrton's home run. Mulrine's double was really the game winner, but the home run by Schaefer is what gave them some separation. A tap ahead of Schaefer, 0-2. Here in the bottom of the second right now, 0-0, and a check swing from Schaefer, but he went around. The home plate umpire is going to make that call, so quick three pitches, and Schaefer is down on strikes. Yeah, tough at-bat there from Ayrton Schaefer. Ryan Tapp working ahead and then was able to work out of the zone and force Ayrton Schaefer to expand a little bit, and Tapp picks up his first strikeout of the contest. Ryan Crockett steps to the plate now. Takes a pitch low and outside for ball one. Crockett, the freshman from Wetumpka, Alabama. He was the number one third base prospect in the state of Alabama last year as a senior in high school. Talked a little about the, the recruiting job that Casey Dunn and his staff have done last night. And they've got a lot of big time prospects and they lost a lot of talent, but they're confident about what they can do this season, and they're very optimistic about, about the team they had this year, despite all the freshmen and new faces. The 1-1 pitch is skied to right field at well out of play. Dogs bringing, bringing quite a many new faces, especially in the field. Only two starters return from a team that won 35 games a year ago. Dogs trying not to take any steps back and continue a trend that it's been the new norm around here since Casey Dunn took over. 30-plus wins for the Dogs on a consistent basis. This one's low and inside. Nine 30-win seasons for Coach Dunn, including three in a row right now. It's been a very strong program in the SoCon since Casey Dunn took over. Here comes the 2-2 pitch from Tap to Crockett, and this one is grounded to the shortstop. 
and Pagano's got it, fires across the diamond, and retires Crockett. So three up, three down, a good inning for Ryan Tapp. We will head to the third scoreless. If you're watching Sanford Baseball on the Sanford Sports Network. General Shale makes your great outdoors even better with big savings on its outdoor living collection. Everything you need to create your own backyard fire pit. Outdoor fireplace, General Shale delivers to your home and can recommend a contractor or offers easy to follow instructions to do it yourself. Save money now on backyard fun with General Shale's complete outdoor living collection. Hurry, your great outdoors is waiting for you. for the first pitch. <laughs> one 0 pitch from Kazanov. Kazanov has been pounding the strike zone. That was his f uh, the first time he's thrown a ball for the first pitch, I think, since the first batter of the game. Yep. But he does even the count here at 1-1. One and one. Reed Holm takes a hack. One and two to Kazanov. He's retired all six batters he's faced so far in the early going. Just in the top of the third, but he's been pounding the strike zone so far. Two and two now. Last night, the bottom six of the order for Asheville failed to record a hit. All five of their hits came from the top three batters in their lineup. And this one is going to be hit the second base. Troy Dixon to his left, but bobbles it. And beating it out by just a step is Friedholm Dixon. Had a play on it. He kind of slipped a little bit and lost control. Still almost got him, but safe by just a step was Andrew Friedholm. Yeah, tough play for, t for Troy moving towards his left, but that's a play he'll tell you he probably should make. Didn't really get a chance to charge that baseball, and it took one too many hops along that dirt and kind of gobbled, gobbled him up, kind of handcuffed him up in towards his body, and it bounced off him just far enough away for Friedholm to reach on the error, which right, it hadn't been posted yet, better. but... Actually, yeah, it looks right like now they're they giving him a hit, hit. And I'm a little surprised by that. I thought that was going to be an E4, but right now they've got it down as a hit. We'll see if that changes. But Kyle Carruthers steps to the plate. With a man on and no outs. And takes a call for a strike. Carruthers in the six hole yesterday, down a couple of spots, like you mentioned, in the open to the eight hole on this Saturday afternoon. Yeah, the only changes in the Asheville lineup, him moving down and both Troost and Friedholm moving up a spot each. Other than that, everything the same. Same players. And for Sanford, the exact same. This one's hit to Crockett. They might turn two here over to Dixon, over to Edens, and they got him by a step. A double play for Sanford. It goes 6-4-3. Make that 5-4-3 around the diamond. Smooth all the way around the horn. Started with Crockett, who got a bit of an in-between hop over at third, fielded it cleanly, and his throw to second was right on the money. And perfect job by Troy Dixon making the quick turn over at the bag to get the speedy the Carruthers. And the dogs turn their second double play in as many days. Base is empty with two away now in the top of the third. So the leadoff single from Friedholm does no damage as they quickly get him off the base pads with that double play. And Derek Smith comes in now with two outs. And Kazanov delivers the first pitch ball. The 1-0 pitch is low. 
2 0 right now to Carruthers. It's been smooth sailing in the early going for Kazanov so far. Two outs in the top of the third. Trying to get through this third inning cleanly. Kazanov, first time through the order, working a lot off that fastball that usually sits around the high 80s. There's a big swing and a miss there. And count now even at 2-2 two and two after Kozinov fell behind 2-0. and oh. Kozinov so far doing a great job locating both sides of the plate. Fell behind 2-0, and oh, got a fastball over the outer half to make it 2-1, came back down and in there to even at 2-2. Two and two. This one is hit up the middle. To his right goes Troy Dixon. He's got plenty of time. Throws over to Edens and retires Derek Smith. So a leadoff single does no damage as they get a double play and then a ground out from Derek Smith. Quick inning for Mikhail Kazanov and the Sanford defense. They'll come back to the plate still looking for that first run of the game, 0-0, as we head to the bottom of the third. You're watching Sanford Baseball on the Sanford Sports Network. The madness begins here. Make sure you're at the U.S. Cellular Center in Asheville, North Carolina, March 2nd through 6th for the 2017 SoCon Basketball Championships presented by General Shale. You don't want to miss the action as your favorite SoCon teams compete for a championship and a berth in the NCAA Tournament. Book your travel and tickets by logging on to SoContravel.com or by contacting the U.S. Cellular Center box office. Madness begins here. Get your tickets today. This is Lauren. These are her first roommates, her first car, and her very first health insurance plan, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama. Even at her age, she's not taking her health for granted. Her affordable health plan includes a routine annual checkup, apps, and programs that fit her lifestyle. Lauren may be just starting out, but with us, she's already got peace of mind. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama. We cover what matters. Find out how we can cover you for the first time. And back again for the bottom of the third inning. Still scoreless between Sanford and UNC Asheville. Kevin Williams Jr. will lead off for Sanford, his first at bat of the day. Pretty stellar catch from Williams the, to lead this game off. Pagano, the first batter of the game for UNC Asheville, hit a deep fly ball to left field that Williams caught at the wall as he takes a hack at the first pitch and falls it back over the screen. And out of play, that one's going to bounce behind us and roll down onto the football field. Williams made some good hard contact last night also. He went one for three with a double. He also uh, roped a ball into right field that was caught, but some good contact from him last night. A good first game as a Sanford Bulldog. And that one outside. And two and one from tap to Williams Jr. Williams Jr. also got this afternoon started with a sterling defensive effort on the very first play of the contest. That one's on the outside corner to even the count at two and two, and Taft's been pretty good so far today as well. Lead off single to TJ Dixon, has not allowed another hit. He did walk Austin Edens, but that was when he had first base open, so no damage done against Taft just yet. 2-2 two -two pitch outside, and we're gonna have a full count here for Kevin Williams. We mentioned the uh, athletic genes in the Williams family. His dad, Kevin Williams Sr., was an NFL player. He played eight seasons for four different teams. And Kevin Williams smashes one into left. This ball is way out of here. And it is one to nothing, Sanford. That ball was absolutely roped. And the left fielder, Cole Harris, he just turned around. He didn't even take a step towards the wall. He just turned around and watched it go. Williams. Straight up ambushing a payoff fastball that he got in the inner half, and he got his hands to it quickly. Turned on that baseball, and the only question about that one was whether it was going to stay fair down the left field line. That was long gone, like you said, and Kevin Williams Jr. draws first blood for the Dogs. They lead 1-0 in the bottom of the third. First home run of his Sanford career. Second of the season for the Bulldogs as a team, both by new faces. It was Schaefer last night, the freshman. And today, Kevin Williams, the JUCO transfer, puts the Sanford Bulldogs on top, this one to nothing, as we go back to the top of the order, and TJ Dixon, who singled to lead off the bottom of the first. 
Got some pop from the nine hole, Kevin Williams Jr. Two extra base hits in two games now out of that nine spot. If he keeps making hard contact the way he's made it thus far, we might see him creeping up in that lineup a little bit because he's hit the ball well so far. T.J. Dixon's going to take a ball low, one and one. So Sanford strikes first off a monster home run from Kevin Williams, Jr. Just the second hit allowed by Ryan Tapp, and T.J.'s going to sky one in the right field. Carruthers has a beat on it. He's back towards the track, but he will track it down in right center field to retire T.J. Dixon. Good pop there from Dixon. Gave it a ride out to right center field, but plenty of room out there, and the ball doesn't necessarily necessarily carry as well here at Joe Lee Griffin Field to the right field corner as it does to the left side. And Carruthers had plenty of time to run over and get under it for out number one. Ryman will come up to the plate for the second time today. A sacrifice bunt in the first inning and he's gonna rope one right up the middle. No play for tap on the pitcher's mound and a base hit for Brandon Fryman. Good aggressive approach there from Fryman. Took a few pitches in his first A.B. and laid down a sac actually laid down a sacrifice bunt in his first A.B. that time. Showing he can handle the bat as well. Jumps on a first pitch fastball and sends it right back through the box to give the dogs a base runner. Troy Dixon comes back to the plate. Popped out to the pitcher's mound in the first inning. It was actually caught by the, the catcher, Andrew Friedholm. So Dixon 0 for 1 on the day. He's going to take a call for a strike. Dixon, I know you mentioned last night, a lot of pinch running appearances last year. Overall, he appeared in 32 games for Sanford last season, but never a regular everyday guy. That's going to change this year. He's going to get a chance to go out there and prove himself. And he's been at second base because they try to get Fryman at first, but he's back safely. Dixon's been at second base the first two games this weekend. He is a versatile guy. He can play anywhere on the infield. So he might, he might be a... A guy that switches around if someone needs a day off, he can go to some other positions, short or third if necessary. Dixon takes a big swing and a miss, and Fryman's running the throw down. It is in time, and they've got Fryman at second base. A great throw there by catcher Andrew Friedholm. Yeah, tough break there for Fryman. Dogs had an 0-1 hit and run on, and the fastball was up in the zone. Dixon couldn't get a barrel to it, and Fryman is cut down, stealing at second base. I think you're going to see a lot more of the dogs trying to put runners in motion, maybe a hit and run, run and hit a little bit more in this dog's lineup than in years past. And unfortunately that time, Fryman's cut down. And Dixon takes the ball outside. Tap still heading the count, one and two. Gave up a lead off home run to Kevin Williams this inning, but trying to get out without any further damage. He has two outs now. And a big swing and a miss from Dixon and Tap will get out of it. So he allows a leadoff home run to Kevin Williams Jr. that puts Stanford on top, one nothing, but no further damage as Tap takes care of the third inning. It's one nothing Stanford. We will head to the fourth. You're watching Stanford baseball on the Stanford Sports Network. I think we should have taken a left at the river. Tarzan, no. Where Tarzan go? Tarzan does not know where Tarzan go. Hey. Excuse me, do you know where the waterfall is? Waterfall? No, no. Me, Tarzan, king of jungle. Why don't you want to just If you're a couple, somebody. you fight over directions. It's what you do. If you want to save 15% or more on car insurance, you switch to Geico. It's what you do. You have to do that right in my ear. Discovering new things is good. For example, you may discover that the best bank in town isn't a bank. And back here for the fourth inning, one to zero. Sanford leads now off the Kevin Williams Jr. home run. As we hit the top of the fourth, I'll throw it over to Blake Gardner to take over the play-by-play. Thank you, sir. Blake Gardner alongside John McAfoos. Get some offense a little bit earlier in this contest than we did in game one's opener last night. Two teams went scoreless through five innings before UNC Asheville did the scoreboard first in the top of the sixth. Kevin Williams Jr. supplying some early pop for Sanford and giving the Dogs an early 1-0 lead. The Dogs from Birmingham on top over the Dogs. 
from UNC Asheville. Back to the top of the order we go for Asheville. It's Carmine Pagano to lead things off in the top of the fourth as Mikhail Koznov has faced the minimum for the first three innings, surrendering just one hit and picking up a double play ball as well in the last frame. Koznov out of the windup. His first pitch is off the plate away for ball one to the UNC Asheville shortstop Carmine Pagano. Pagano with the best contact of the day so far for Asheville, that deep fly to left. That. This is in the hole towards short on the run. Fryman throws across his body and scooped up over at first by Austin Eden's great play on both ends to retire Carmine Pagano for round number one. Yeah, Pagano's almost been robbed on two at bats now. That line or that fly ball in the first inning caught by Williams at the wall and right there a great play by Fryman. He's made a couple of stellar plays at shortstop these first two games. Nice play on the run there, making the throw across his body. Dogs defense has looked very good through the first three and a third innings of this contest. Kale Kosnoff inducing a lot of ground balls early on as he is wont to do. His first pitch to Cole Harris is in there for a called strike one. Kosnoff right back to work. This one misses just a bit downstairs, evens the count at one apiece. Kosnoff so far six first pitch strikes in the first 10, make it 11 batters that he's faced. As Harris takes a big cut, comes up empty, it's one and two. So far, good efficiency from Kosnoff. The next delivery from him will be pitch number 34 as we work in the top of the fourth. One, two on the way, breaking ball, cut on and missed, and down goes Cole Harris. Second strikeout victim of the afternoon for Mikhail Kozinov, and quickly two up and two down in the top of the fourth. Yeah, Kozinov right now just breezing through this Asheville lineup. Just one hit allowed, and that was the one that Troy Dixon bobbled at second base, so he's really had no issues so far as, as he's going through this Asheville lineup for the second time now today. Brandon Langford gets his second look at Kozinov with the bases empty and two away in the fourth. First pitch is a fastball upstairs for ball one. Langford, the freshman from Moxville, North Carolina, Davie County High School. Good size, 6'1", 215 pounds. As he steps in the right-handed batter's box, this fastball short hops home plate, and it's two balls and no strikes. Langford, one of two Asheville Bulldogs with multi-hit contest last night. He and Carmine Pagano, two of UNC Asheville's five hits as this fastball is in there to bring the count back to two and one. Dogs had just one, Sanford, pardon me, had just one multi-hit member in the lineup. That was Austin Eden, who went two for four last night as the 2-1 is downstairs to run the count to three balls and one strike. Kozinov trying to avoid issuing his first free pass of the contest. 3-1 count with two away to Brandon Langford. This is chopped towards third, down the line and past the diving Crockett. It's a fair ball inside the bag and rolling towards the corner. Williams Jr. comes up with it on the line, but sliding into second with a two-out double is Brandon Langford. Yeah, great, great hit there right inside the bag and a, a great effort by Crockett diving to his right, just can't quite get a glove on it. As the ball was just fair inside the third base. Lankford didn't square it up. It got just enough of the barrel to it to scoot it down the third base line past the outstretched glove of Crockett. And for the first time this afternoon, UNC Asheville has a chance with a runner in scoring position as Joe Tijan makes his way to the plate. Tijan still looking for his first hit of the year right now for Asheville. Kozinoff out of the stretch. First pitch breaking ball misses downstairs for ball one. Tijan, as you mentioned last year, the team leader in batting average for UNC Asheville hit 344. So far this year, 0 for his first four officially. Did draw a walk in last night's contest. Kozinov with a long look at second, one more. And now a turn and a spin towards second to chase back Brandon Langford. UNC Asheville trying to answer the solo shot from Kevin Williams Jr. that has given Sanford an early 1-0 edge. Back in the bottom of the third. Open stance for Tijan. Kozinov comes home. 1-0 on the way. Another breaking ball. Good pitch. Cut on and missed. It's 1-1. One one. Yeah. 
Ashfield at this point. Not many opportunities with runners in scoring position, uh, including last night's game. So for them, it's, it's important to try to make something happen here, especially with Sanford out to an early lead. Kosnoff comes set, comes home. 1-1, one, one breaking ball in the dirt and off the kneecap of Mulrine behind home plate. He runs all the way up towards the UNC Asheville dugout to chase down the wild pitch. Advancing second to third is Brandon Lankford. As UNC Asheville's tying run is now just 90 feet away. And Mulrine lost that ball for a second, and I thought that Lankford might take a pretty wide turn around third base, but put up the brakes fairly quickly, and Kosnoff, of course, great job to cover home plate just in case. Langford uh, was feeling a little bit risky. So Tijan steps in, that runner advancing from second to third. And Tijan ahead in the count against Kozlov. Two balls and one strike. Just one strike. With two outs in the top of the fourth. Kozlov comes set, comes home. 2 1. Good pitch on the outside corner. And it runs, it deuces. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. And a one run contest with a runner at third. Kosnov trying to work out of the top of the fourth. Kosnov comes set, comes home, 2-2, two -two, paints the outside corner. That is a called strike three. Third strikeout for Kosnov this afternoon, and it gets the dogs out of the top of the fourth. Another zero thrown up on the board by Mikhail Kosnov. Four straight scoreless innings. We head to the bottom of the fourth with Sanford on top, one nothing. As you watch Sanford Bulldog okay, Baseball. Coming from Joe Lee Griffin Field as the dogs prepare to send the middle of the order up against Ryan Tap. Four, five, and six do up for the dogs. So far, the Sanford offense, one run on three hits through the first three frames. UNC Asheville through four, no runs on two hits. They have left that one runner. Dogs have left two already. Sanford left a ton of runners on last night. Double figures for the Sanford offense. As Austin Edens gets ready to bat with the bases empty. As the leadoff hitter on the bottom of the fourth, Ryan Tapp, the big right-hander, back on the rubber. First base side of it as he turns and fires towards Edens. First pitch is a breaking ball that misses away for ball one. Tapp a huge frame, every bit of six foot eight. Tallest pitcher on the squad for Asheville. Back-to-back -back breaking balls to start Austin Edens. This one's in there to even at one and one. Austin Edens drew a full count walk and his first look at Ryan Sapp back in the first. As the 1-1 is another breaking ball, three straight, and this one's on the corner as well. One ball and two strikes. And you mentioned Edens being the only Samford player to have a multi-hit game last night, but all nine starters reached base at, at least once last night, so a, a pretty productive night overall for the Samford offense. No complaints whatsoever there. 1-2 is the fourth straight breaking ball of the at-bat, this one misses away and in the dirt, runs the count even, two balls and two strikes. Austin Eden's an over 400 hitter a year ago when leading off a frame. As the 2-2 is on the way, fastball, and it looked really good, but just misses the outside corner. Great take from Eden's and it runs the count full, three balls and two strikes. So a good battle brewing between Tap and Edens to open up the bottom half of the fourth. Tap from the wind up, payoff pitch on the way, breaking ball in the dirt, another good take from Austin Edens, and back-to-back -back walks drawn in two plate appearances 
for the junior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He's aboard to start the dogs half of the fourth. And already three walks on the young season for Austin Edens. That might be a, something we get used to seeing throughout these uh, Sanford Bulldog home games this, this year. No complaints here as Edens is aboard. Jordan Fusey, one of three left-handed bats in the dogs lineup. Strides to the plate. Fusey hit one right on the screws back in the first, but right at the right fielder, Kyle Carruthers. As the first pitch is hacked, it's fouled straight back over our heads. And Ryan Zapp is ahead, nothing and one. Jordan Fusey. At the plate in the five hole, dogs go left, right, left, right, left through the first five hitters, and then six through nine in this Bulldog lineup are all right-handed. 0-1 is hit towards the first base side, foul past the Bulldogs dugout, and quickly it's nothing in two. Jordan Fusey wearing number 25, a 6'4", 205-pound sophomore from Tate's Creek High School, Lexington, Kentucky. Gets his second straight start. Bulldogs pretty much run the lineup back from last night as the 0-2 is up and away. Make the count one and two. Only minor changes from game one to game two for UNC Asheville. Dogs going with the exact same thing that gave them an opening day win last Friday night. One, two on the way to Fusey. Backdoor breaking ball. Thawed off down the left side. Out of play. We'll do it again. It'll be curious to see what the lineups look like tomorrow for the finale of this three-game series. Usually Sunday there's maybe one or two changes. Of course, tomorrow Blake and I will have the call again. It'll be a 1 o'clock start time. 1-2 one, once more to Fusey. This is upstairs. Runs the count 2-2. Two and two. Plenty of action across campus and across the Southern Conference, really. Men's basketball, we mentioned already, is in action tonight in the Pete Hanna Center just across the way at 6 p.m. Central Time. Women's basketball is underway at Wofford over on 91.1 WVSU. Kurt Bloom has the call. 2-2, two -two, this is hit on the ground. Right side off the fist. Smith fields it, tries to go to second for one and gets the force out there. Nice play from Smith. Heads up to at least get the lead runner. Austin Edens has cut down at second base, and UNC Asheville has one away in the bottom of the fourth. Yeah, that's a great play there to get the lead runner. I thought certainly that Edens was going to get to second base there, but you said a, gr a great play there by their second baseman, Derek Smith, to turn his body and throw over to the shortstop covering to, to get that lead runner out. So Fusey and Edens trade places. Fusey now the runner at first. Kyle Mulrine, Anthony Mulrine makes his way to the plate. First pitch is on the corner for a call and strike one. As Kyle Carruthers takes a couple of steps towards the right field line, out in right field. Mulrine digs back in. Fusey, short lead over at first. 0-1, that misses off the plate away. Make it one ball and one strike. Will Ryan had a long fly ball into foul territory right in front of the tarp, his first at bat. It was a caught by Carruthers on a nice play. 1-1 one, one on the way. This is hit on the ground towards second. Could be two. Smith, the second for one. Relay to first. Is in plenty of time to cut down Anthony Mulrine. 4-6-3 double play. Turned by the middle infield for UNC Asheville. And it gets the Asheville Bulldogs out of the bottom of the fourth. Dogs, no runs. No hits and no errors. Nobody left on base. The lone base runner, Austin Edens, led off the inning with the walk, but the dogs can do nothing with it. one nothing Sanford as we played four complete from Jolie Griffin Field. You're watching Sanford Bulldog Baseball. Game day brings out the best in all of us. Regions, every day is game day.
Human beings can be hungry anytime they please. Maybe you messed up and didn't eat enough lunch. Perhaps dinner is very far away. It doesn't matter. Come to Arby's and solve your hunger problems with dollar sliders, cookies, small size fries, drinks, and shakes, each for a dollar from two to five. P.M. Not A.M. Arby's, we have the meats. Joe Lee Griffin Field, Homewood, Alabama, Sanford on top early, 1-0 as we head to the bottom, or pardon me, the top of the fifth. Kel Kosnoff back out for his fifth inning of work. The Bulldogs Saturday starter so far, just 45 pitches through four frames in the 13 batters he's faced. Five ground ball outs, three strikeouts, and three fly ball outs as well. That's five, six, and seven. Kick off the top of the fifth offensively for UNC Asheville. It starts with first baseman Danny Wilson. So Wilson digs in. Kozinov readies himself on the mound. First pitch fastball is in there for a strike. It's the ninth first pitch strike delivered by Mikhail Kozinov this afternoon. He's ahead nothing and one. Yeah, Asheville so far in the series has gotten little to no production from the middle of their order. No hits so far for their four, five, and six guys. Freed home, the lone producer thus far through a game and a half out of the bottom half of the order. He's got to hit one of two Asheville hits in this contest so far. Kozinoff ahead, nothing in two. The 0-2 fastball misses off the plate away. Make it one ball and two strikes. Danny Wilson, the six-foot sophomore from Hampstead, North Carolina, Top Sale High School. One of two Top Sale High School graduates on this team as Wilson cuts on and misses at a 1-2 fastball. Kozinoff's got four strikeouts now in five frames, and Wilson is the first casualty at the top of the fifth. The yeah, the second time through the lineup is presented. Truth. No problems for Kozinoff. He's still mowing him down at the pace he did that first time through the order. So Mikhail Kozinoff continues to cruise. Thus far, Chris Tro steps in. Freshman designated hitter getting a second consecutive start in that position. First pitch just misses inside for ball one. Kozinov probably punished for missing a spot right there. Mulrine was set up away, had to work back towards the inner half of the plate. Snag that baseball. And that one misses upstairs. So two straight out of the zone for Mikhail Kozinov, who thus far has issued no walks after Sanford pitchers issued eight free passes yesterday. 2-0, this is sky towards right. Hit fairly well, but a bit too high. Under it is Fusey out in right field. He makes the catch. No problems out there, and quickly two gone for Asheville on the top of the fifth. So Trost is retired. The lone left-handed bat. In this Asheville lineup this afternoon, Andrew Friedholm steps in back on the right-handed side of home plate. Friedholm, the 5'11 sophomore catcher from Greer, South Carolina. Riverside High School, first pitch is in there for a call and strike one. Friedholm had that first hit of the day for Asheville, but was eventually taken off the base pass by the 5-4-3 double play that Carruthers hit into. 0-1, check swing from Friedholm, did not go around, even to the count at 1-1. One one. Friedholm, a guy who's looking to get his offense going in his sophomore campaign, never really got it figured out at the plate in his freshman campaign, hitting less than 100 in his first season of college baseball. Kosnoff works back ahead, one ball and two strikes. Mikhail Kosnoff continues to cruise. He's one pitch away from... Working a three up, three down, top of the fifth. One, two on the way, that is cut on and hit right side out of play into the Hanna Center brick. We'll redo it. Yeah, you mentioned the low batting average last year. Just 72 at bats for Friedholm, but only seven hits. Two of those hits were home runs, so he's got a little bit of pop if he can make contact, but he did strike out 28 times last year in those 72 at bats. Kozinoff looking for yet another strikeout one here. One, two on the way, that's off. The end of the bat out of play as well. Count remains one ball and two strikes. So far, two hits for UNC Asheville offensively. One extra base hit. As Mikhail Kozinov has 
been in control this afternoon. Breaking ball outside corner, cold strike three. Kozanoff with the fifth strikeout of the afternoon and three up, three down. Go the Asheville Bulldogs in the top of the fifth. We head to the bottom half, halfway home from Jolie Griffin Field. Sanford on top, one nothing. This is Sanford Bulldog baseball. Did you order a pizza? Pizza drone! Get down! Pizza drone! Are you kidding me? Gimmicks don't make better pizza. Our people and ingredients make better pizza. Get Papa John's Ultimate Meats Pizza with five different meats on pan or large crust, only $11. Or more than a pizza company or a pizza family. Papa John's. <laughs> Ryan Tapp back out for his fifth inning of work. Starting pitcher for UNC Asheville. Making his first career start for the Asheville Bulldogs so far. Can't complain about the effort. Four innings, three hits, just one earned run. Struck out two and walked two. His first delivery at the bottom of the fifth will be pitch number 60. For big Ryan Tapp in the middle of the diamond, he'll see the bottom third of the order to start the bottom of the fifth. Seven, eight, nine due up for Sanford, and that starts with Ayrton Schaefer. Yeah, it's been a great effort from Tap so far. Just a little bit outdone by the guy opposing him for Sanford, Mikhail Kozinov, who's now gone five innings, five strikeouts, and no walks, and only two hits allowed. Mentioned all the different activities across Sanford Athletics going on today. Congratulations to Sanford Women's Basketball. They pick up a 55-48 win in Spartanburg against the Wofford Terriers. Meanwhile, on the Sanford softball side, Sanford softball trailed by seven, seven nothing after three innings. They battled all the way back, tied seven, seven. They're headed to extra frames against the Jacksonville Dolphins. You mentioned the women's basketball win. They'll be back here next sat Saturday for their final home game against Mercer. That's part of a basketball doubleheader, followed by men playing the Citadel. Ayrton Schaefer jumps on one inside half of the plate, rips it towards left on the run, back track wall, it is gone. Over the head of Cole Harris and over the wall as well. For the second straight day, Ayrton Schaefer goes yard, and the Dogs have their second solo shot of the afternoon. They take a 2-0 lead. Yeah, and that one was hit on a line right to the 365 mark. And turning around and kind of running back towards the wall was left fielder um, Cole Harris, unlike the uh, Williams home run where he kind of just turned around and watched that one he did kind of make a play on. But you could tell off the bat that although it was hit on a line that it was going to get over the wall. An absolute missile launched by Ayrton Schaefer to give the Dogs a 2-0 lead. This is ripped as well. Nice leaping play at short by Carmine Pagano to take a hit away from Ryan Crockett. And Crockett, unfortunately, despite the hard contact, becomes the first out in the bottom of the fifth. Bulldog left fielder Kevin Williams, Jr. So the, the new faces continuing to, uh, to impress for the Sanford Bulldogs. Jesse McCord on the mound last night. Schaefer home runs yesterday and today. Kevin Williams home run today. And a great catch in left field. Kevin Williams Jr. back to the plate. First time he's seen Ryan Tapp since his solo home run that was launched out of here back in the third. He takes downstairs and downstairs again. It's quickly two balls and no strikes. To Kevin Williams, the transfer from Miami Dade College. Down in the southern part of Florida. Dogs have pulled plenty of talent from South Florida over the last few years. Kevin Williams, the next guy in line, the starting left fielder last night and today as he swings on and misses at a pitch up in the zone. Two balls and one strike. 2-1 on the way to Williams. Hit hard. Foul over the Bulldogs. Dugout. Count even 2-2. Two and two. Williams, 6 feet, 190 pounds from Miami, Florida. Dogs have pulled number of guys from that area of Florida. Danny Rodriguez, Frankie Navarrete, Andres Gracia, Mark Donham, all coming from the southern half of that state. 2-2 off-speed pitch. Williams is out in front and will go down swinging 
third strikeout victim from Ryan Tapp this afternoon. And two down in the inning as we go back to the top of the order with TJ Dixon. And there is some action in the Asheville bullpen. Now it is number 47, Joe Zayats, right-hander. So Tapp trying to get through this fifth inning, but this might be the end of the day for him. Dixon takes downstairs for ball one. Base is empty, two away. Bottom of the fifth as Dixon gets his third look at Asheville starter Ryan Tapp. Next pitch from Tapp will be pitch number 70. As we work in the bottom of the fifth, this is hit well towards left center. On the run is Tijan. He can cruise over towards the gap as he was shaded that way and make the catch to retire the side in the bottom of the fifth. But the dog strike again. It's another solo shot this time off the bat. Of Ayrton Schaefer, his second home run in as many days, doubles the dogs' lead. They lead 2 0 as we head to the sixth. Next, as you watch Sanford Bulldog Baseball. If you're entering a Division I college or university on or after August 1st of 2016, there are some new academic requirements you need to know. First, you have to graduate high school within four consecutive years from the start of ninth grade. And in those four years, you have to pass 16 core courses. Next, your 16 core courses must be taken in a specific area of study at a specific time during high school. Your 16 core courses will determine your core GPA, which must be 2.3 or higher to be eligible to practice, compete, or receive an athletic scholarship during your freshman year in college. Ten of those 16 have to be taken before your seventh semester. Those 10 courses are locked in, meaning you can't retake them to improve your GPA. You must also earn a combined ACT and SAT score that matches your core course GPA on the Division I sliding scale. It's important to build a team that you can depend on for guidance and support. So go talk to your guidance counselor and ask them to join your team. We all were in your shoes just a few years ago, so we know what it takes to become a Division I student athlete. But more importantly, we know what it means to make our dreams become a reality. You can too. Top of the sixth. Coming for the Sanford Bulldogs and the Asheville Bulldogs as well. Fans, don't forget the annual Sanford Baseball Kids Day takes place after Sunday's series finale. Come meet the 2017 Bulldogs. Jump in the bounce house, enjoy free food, get autographs on your free posters, and even work out with the team. And as always, kids, 12 and under, get in free, courtesy of Alabama Power. That's all Sunday afternoon here at Joe Lee Griffin Field with Samford Baseball as we play the third and final game of this opening weekend series between the Bulldogs of Asheville and the Bulldogs of Samford. Five gone, getting ready for the top of the six. That's eight, nine, and one, two up for UNC Asheville. To see Mikhail Kozinov, who is completing his second time through the order. First pitch is a fastball that misses down and away for ball one. Kyle Carruthers, the right fielder, double play ball victim back in the third in his first look at Kozinov. Counts now even one and one as Kozinov pours in another fastball. Two nothing Sanford, a couple of solo shots. Represent the dogs offense to this point, just two hits for UNC Asheville thus far. Andrew Friedholm and Brandon Lankford Breaking ball misses downstairs. It's two balls and one strike as Kozinov comes back towards the plate. This is lifted into center. On the run in is T.J. Dixon diving and can't make the play. It's going to be a clean single for Kyle Carruthers. A nice job by Kevin Williams, Jr. backing up Dixon there. Doesn't let the ball get too far past him. He gets the ball back in quickly to hold Carruthers to a single. So the Texas leaguer falls in in front of T.J. Dixon who had a tough read. That's the toughest ball to read as an outfielder. The ball that's kind of hit right at you. You can't tell how hard it's been hit off the bat. Dixon got a late break and had to race towards the infield. Couldn't get there in time. Still nearly got it. Just came up a couple inches short. So Carruthers aboard with a leadoff single as Asheville tries to cut into a 2-0 deficit. Derek Smith, the nine-hole senior second baseman, lays down a bunt, pops it up in front of Kozinov, who makes the barehanded play, throw to second to get the lead runner, is not in time. In fact, it might have pulled Fryman off the back at second base, and everybody is safe. And quickly, two base runners for Asheville to kick off the top of the sixth. Yeah, they had the play at second, and Fryman was there, but Kozinov's throw sailed a little high, and Fryman's foot came just barely off the bag as Carruthers slid in there. So now UNC Asheville looking to do some damage down 2-0, but with two on and no out. First time this afternoon, Asheville's had multiple base runners aboard. And the first time they've had their first two guys in an inning reach. 
Back to the top of the order we go. Carmine Pagano with two on and nobody out. Kozinov from the stretch. Comes set, comes home. Pagano shows bunt, pulls it back. It's in there for a called strike one. And that was ruled an error, the first one of the game for either team. Likely see Pagano trying to lay one down. UNC Asheville with just eight sacrifice bunts all of last season. Perfect time for one in a 2 nothing contest with two on and nobody out. Pagano calls time and steps out. Pagano 0 for 2 today with a fly out and a ground out. Corners cheating in. Eden's on the edge of the grass, as is the third baseman, Ryan Crockett. We'll see how the dogs rotate their bunt defense, assuming Pagano does turn and square on 0-1. 0-1 on the way, cutting on and missing is Pagano. He's quickly in the hole, nothing in two. So no bunt attempt from Carmine Pagano. Instead, he swings the bat and comes up empty, and now he's deep in the hole, nothing in two. Kozinov comes set with two aboard and nobody out. 0-2 oh, on the way, breaking ball. That is a cold strike three, and good morning, good afternoon, good night to Carmine Pagano. He goes down, and it's a big out number one for Mikhail Kozinov on his sixth strikeout of the afternoon. It's one out in the top of the sixth. Yep, as you said, that's a big one with the first two runners of the inning aboard. To come back and get that punch out is huge, and Cole Harris coming up now, trying to get Asheville back into this game. Huge punch out there from Kozinov. He's now just one pitch away from working out of a jam with a double play ball. Cole Harris, 0 for 2 today, has already grounded out in double play ball territory. Grounded out to Brandon Fryman back in the first. Was also a strikeout victim in the fourth. Kozinov working from the stretch with two aboard and one away. First pitch to Harris is in the dirt. Good stop behind home plate by Anthony Mulrine. To keep everybody at their respective bases, it's 1 0. Harris, the freshman left fielder, one for four last night with an extra base hit. His first hit of this contest would likely get Asheville on the scoreboard here in the sixth. Eden's not holding at first. The 1 0 on the way, breaking ball, cut on and missed. It's 1 and 1. Carruthers, the runner at second. Smith, the runner at first. Harris at the plate. With Mikhail Kozinov. Trying to work out of a jam here in the top of the sixth. The first two Asheville hitters reached. Strikeout from Pagano was the first out, and this is lifted. Right field line, foul territory. On the run is Fusey. On the run is Dixon. Diving is Fusey, but he can't come up with it. It's going to land in foul territory. Great effort there by Fusey, and Edens and Dixon both going out as well. And Fusey looked like he might have a play on it, but couldn't cope quite get there. Diving effort nonetheless. So it lands harmlessly in foul territory for strike two. You mentioned some action in the Asheville bullpen, action in the Bulldog bullpen as well, a double barrel. A lefty and a righty up and throwing for Sanford. Next pitch from Kozinov will be pitch number 70. It's still a great pitch count for Kozinov. He's been incredibly efficient today, and 70 pitches in the in the top of the sixth inning is a very, very good pitch count. Dogs have gotten some good starting pitching each of these first two starts. Jesse McCord was outstanding in five and two-thirds of scoreless baseball yesterday. One-two on the way, breaking ball up in the zone, but fouled straight back out of play. Sanford's bullpen yesterday, a good showing from them as well. The offense, as we mentioned, everyone getting on base at least once. McCord, a solid start, and the bullpen really uh, shutting Asheville down when they needed to. Kyle Stewart came out of the bullpen, got the dogs out of a jam there in the sixth. Aaron Baldwin threw up a scoreless seventh. As Kozinov goes to work on a 1-2 count against Cole Harris. 1-2 pitch on the way, breaking ball, cut on and missed. Down goes Harris, and after the first two Asheville hitters reach, it's back-to-back -back strikeouts from Mikhail Kozinov for two outs in the top of the sixth. Harris for the second time this afternoon, a strikeout victim swinging, and 
The buck will now be passed down the line. It's Brandon Lankford who will try to come through for Asheville. Wyatt Burns also coming in last night to earn the save. Although it was a four run win for Sanford, he did inherit a bases loaded situation. So he did earn a save his first of the year. As Lankford steps in with two outs and two on, this is Sky towards left. On the run back towards the wall is Williams, but he will have room two or three strides in front of the warning track out in left. He makes the play, and Mikhail Kozinov dances around two opening base runners in the top of the sixth to strand them right there. Sanford maintains a 2-0 advantage as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Next, you're watching Sanford Bulldog Baseball. At Express Oil Change and Tire Engineers, we believe in service. Maintenance service, tire service, repair service, and most importantly, customer service. We believe in treating our customers with respect and integrity while offering all the services you need for your car. Most of all, at Express Oil Change and Tire Engineers, we believe in keeping cars on the road, keeping families safe, and keeping you coming back whenever the need arises. Bottom of the six coming from Joe Liegerfin Field. Sanford fans, don't forget Scott Paget's Sanford Bulldogs return to the Pete Hanna Center this Saturday. That is tonight, 6 p.m. start against VMI, and it's our Academy Sports and Outdoors night. Just drop by any Birmingham area Academy Sports and Outdoors location. That's Hoover, Lee Branch, or Trussville, and pick up your Academy Admit 4 voucher. It's good for four free general admission tickets to Saturday's matchup and no purchase is necessary. So get to Academy Sports and Outdoors and get your Admit 4 voucher, and we will see you Saturday for Sanford Bulldog basketball. Got to finish up some Sanford Bulldog baseball first as the bottom of the six gets underway with Brandon Fryman taking a first pitch breaking ball in there for a called strike one. Fryman officially one for one today. A sacrifice bunt laid down in the first and a single back through the box in the third. This is hit on the ground and through the six hole into left field. Back-to-back -back singles for Brandon Fryman. He continues to find his way aboard in these first two games of 2017, and the Dogs have a leadoff base runner in the bottom half of the sixth. Yeah, an aggressive approach there from Fryman, hitting that ball to the left side through the hole. As you mentioned, two for two. A good day for him so far, and uh, he's showed off some nice glove work at shortstop as well through these first two games. So Fryman finds himself aboard. Dogs trying to tack on some insurance already with a 2-0 lead. In the bottom of the six, Troy Dixon makes his way to the plate as Fryman has to dive back in after the pick attempt from Ryan Tapp. Game moving very quickly so far, which I know we're all thankful for since we all have to get over to the Pete Hanna Center for 6 p.m. men's basketball tonight, Sanford versus VMI. No complaints whatsoever from us. Three-hour, two-minute contest last night. Had a little bit of a lengthy affair in the middle innings as both teams issued up a few free passes, some long at-bats. Each, team, each team's pitching staff, I should say, issued eight walks plus four hit batsmen between the two squads as well. Dixon, the lefty at the plate. First pitch on the way. That's in there for a called strike one. Troy at the plate. Last time was a strikeout victim back in the third. Also, while he was at the plate, Fryman was cut down, stealing at second. We'll see if the dogs put the hit and run back on. In the bottom of the sixth, Ryan Tapp certainly thinks so. As he checks once more over to Brandon Fryman at first. Just like yesterday, plenty of action across the Southern Conference. Furman gets a win over Dayton, 9-7. to seven. That game has gone finals. They got an early start this Saturday morning. 0-1, fouled off left side out of play. It's 0-2. Watford in a pitcher's duel with Florida A&M picks up a narrow 3-2 win. So the Terriers back in the win column this afternoon. Western Carolina currently leads the defending champs in college baseball, the number 11th ranked right now. Coastal Carolina Shanna Clears 
Two nothing Catamounts in the bottom of the fourth at the Caravelle Resort Baseball at the Beach Tournament in Conway. 0-2 is a good fastball spotted up, but just off the plate away. It's one and two. Coastal Carolina, former member of the Big South Conference, as we talked about yesterday, won a national championship last year, the first ever for the Big South, and now a member of the Sunbelt Conference. One ball, two strikes to Troy Dixon. One, two on the way. Troy checks his swing and pulls it back, and it looks like we are going to have a foul ball ruled by our home plate umpire. He wants to ring up Troy Dixon. Dixon thought it hit him off the elbow, or at least the forearm area. He was getting ready to head down to first. And that will draw a very upset visit from Sanford head coach Casey Dunn. Didn't get a great look at it from our vantage point up in the Carly Miller press box. Yeah, tough to tell from up here, but Dixon certainly thought it got a piece of him. Certainly didn't sound like it hit the bat. Dixon's wearing a guard on one of those arms. Sounded like it either clipped that or maybe a piece of forearm. Can't see any reason why our home plate umpire wouldn't check with the rest of his crew to see what they saw. Home plate umpire today is Terrence Mobley. Let's see if Mobley can check with C.J. Burdett or Ricky Powell to see what they saw. Whatever reason, Terrence Mobley very assuredly thinks that he saw this foul off of Troy Dixon. And Dunn's really not happy about it. He's still out there just finally heading back to the bullpen right now, but still talking on his way back. Tough break from Dixon. He thought he had a free bag. Instead, he's down on strikes as the umpire rules that that ball foul tipped. Off of Dixon into the glove of Andrew Friedholm. And after a lengthy conversation, no check from Mobley to the rest of his crew members. And Dixon is down on strikes. So Troy Dixon, the first down at the bottom of the sixth. Austin Edens makes his way to the plate. And he takes a first pitch breaking ball that's in there for a called strike one. Edens, the junior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Having another solid afternoon thus far has worked his way aboard twice with a couple of walks drawn 0-1 on the way this is fouled off right side out of play it's nothing in two Edens as, as great as he was last year even a little better his freshman season 357 average 442 on base OPS over a thousand Edens had an outstanding freshman campaign burst onto the scene in the 2015 season dealt on and off with a little bit of injury in the 2016 season Let's come back here in 2017. Healthy and ready to rake, and he had a multi-hit contest in Friday night's game, the first RBI hit for the Dogs that got Sanford on the board. Last night, hasn't seen a whole lot good to hit so far in this contest as he gets his third look at Ryan Tapp. 0-2 on the way from Tapp. This is Sky's right side, foul territory, headed towards the brick and out of play over our lawn chair brigade, first base side, and into some of the shrubbery in front of the Pete Hanna Center. Eden's last year mentioned an outstanding performance from the sophomore. Also very good with runners on base, runners in scoring position. The 0-2 stays down. It's one ball and two strikes as Fryman stays at first base. Now the thing that really impresses me about Edens is the fact that he hits for such a great average in addition to the power. A lot of times in today's game, you see these power hitters that it's a lot, you know the three true outcomes: walk, strike out, or home run for some of these guys. But Edens, he'll he'll hit for power to all fields, but he'll hit for a high average as well. One, two in the dirt, good stop back there by Andrew Friedholm, who doesn't let that get to the screen. We're back even two and two. Yeah, you're right. Edens actually has. More pop, some of the coaches say, towards right and right center. Loves to work that opposite field alley. In fact, that's where the center fielder, Joe Tejan, is actually shaded. He's about five or six steps over towards that right center field gap. Carruthers is a few steps over towards the right field line, trying to take that alley away from Edens. 2-2 Two -two on the way, runner going, and the fastball skips past Andrew Friedholm towards the screen. Fryman will take the bag easily. 
And the count runs full. So from 0-2 to 3-2 we go. And Austin Edens has an RBI shot here now. It's been a great at bat so far after falling behind 0-2, as you said, to get back in this forcing tap into a full count here. And now with a runner in scoring position, Edens has a chance to knock in an insurance run here for the Sanford Bulldogs. So Edens at the plate. First base open for Ryan Tapp. If he wants to pitch around, Edens wants more. Payoff pitch on the way to Edens. That's off the plate away. Pull four. Third straight plate appearance for Austin Edens this afternoon. Third straight base on balls as Edens trots down to first. And the dogs now after UNC Asheville had two aboard in the top of the six. Sanford has answered with two aboard in the bottom half. And what a great plate appearance that was from Austin Edens falling behind 0-2 and, and working a walk out of it. Now Sanford threatening to put up some more runs here in the bottom of the sixth inning, already leading 2-0. So Eden's the runner at first, Fryman the runner at second. And Jordan Fusey making his way to the plate. Ryan Tapp likely nearing the end of the line. Don't want him throwing too many pitches early on in this 2017 campaign. Tapp's at 83 as now we do see time called. And we will have a visit to the mound. Joe Zayats, the righty, still out there throwing in the Asheville bullpen. He's been warming up for quite a while now, so I'm sure he's loose and ready to go if a pitching change is needed here. He's been up and throwing. Jesse Jade also up and throwing right now. The six-foot junior from Greensboro working down that left field line. So far, Ryan Tapp, 83 pitches and 22 batters faced. Five and a third innings pitched. Surrendered two runs on five hits, struck out four, and has walked three. And we'll see how many more hitters Ryan Tapp is Allowed to face. Can't complain about the job he's done in his first career start for UNC Asheville thus far. Not at all. He's had a very good game, as we said, a little overshadowed by Kazanov, but just two runs allowed, five hits. It's been a pretty efficient game for Tapp so far. Does have four strikeouts and three walks. All three walks coming to Austin Edens. Edens has been perennially pitched around this afternoon. He's at first. Fryman's the runner at second. Mound visit concludes, and Ryan Tapp will stick around to see Jordan Fusey, a guy he's had success against so far. Fusey 0 for 2 against Tapp, getting his third look at the big right-hander. 6'8", Ryan Tapp working from the stretch with two on and one out in the bottom of the six. Dogs trying to tack on to a 2-0 lead. Fryman. Dancing at second as Tap comes home. First pitch is inside for ball one. Really the only damage against Tap has just come on a couple of mistakes. Solo home runs from both Kevin Williams Jr. and Ayrton Schaefer. Other than that, he's done a good job of limiting the damage, limiting extra base hits. Fusey turns on one, pulls it hard, but foul down the right side. Evens the count one and one. Limited appearances last year. Jordan Fusey with runners on base, 5 of 17, 294. This is the Dogs' third chance this afternoon with runners in scoring position. They were 0 for 2. Asheville 0 for 4 as a team thus far. With Fryman, the runner in scoring position at second. Tap out of the stretch, the 1 1 is a breaking ball that stays downstairs. Two balls and one strike. If you see a one for three performance last night, had an RBI flare to left in the seventh, has an RBI chance today in the sixth as Tap steps off, readjusts, and now re-engages the first base side of the rubber. Yeah, I think if Fusey can find a way on base here, that'll probably be the end of the day for Ryan Tap. 2-1 on the way, off-speed changeup off the end of the bat, fouled towards the Bulldog dugout. The count's even two and two. Tap has shown a solid three-pitch mix today. Fastball slider and that changeup that he's shown to Troy Dixon and Jordan Fusey. As double barrel action continues down the left field line in the Asheville bullpen. 2-2 on the way. Hard fastball, but it stays well above the zone. And the scoreboard now says 3-2-1. Three, three balls, two strikes, and one away as we play in the bottom of the sixth with two on. For the big lefty, Jordan Fusey, time called is 
Andrew Friedholm, the Asheville catcher, will signal to the rest of his infielders. No hold from Wilson, the first baseman. He's playing well behind the base runner, Austin Edens. Double play depth up the middle with the exception of the second baseman, Smith, who shaded a couple of steps towards the four hole. Payoff pitch on the way to Fusey. Change up, chopped off his foot, foul. Yeah, a little stinger right there for Fusey. He's got to shake that off. That one stings just a little bit. Fusey's going to have to walk that one off gingerly. We'll draw another visit from Sanford head coach Casey Dunn. Dogs going with the all red jerseys today. Red tops, white pants, blue hats with the American flag star in the middle, SU across it. And blue helmets, UNC Asheville going with their black jerseys today. Black outlined in blue with black hats and blue bills. Blue logo in the middle. And Asheville across the chest. Busey walks it off. He's good to go and ready to dig in for another payoff pitch from Brian Tapp. Turn and spin towards second to check on Brandon Fryman, who dives back in. Tapp nearly threw that one into center field. Saw that earlier today. UNCG is in Carolina taking on the fourth-ranked South Carolina Gamecocks. UNCG starting pitcher turned and spun and sent one into center field. Payoff pitch to Fusey once more. Misses the inside corner. Ball four as Jordan Fusey will trot on down to first, and the bases are full of Sanford Bulldogs with Anthony Mulrain striding to the plate. Great patience shown by Sanford this inning, both with Austin Edens and with Jordan Fusey working walks to load the bases and only one out. And it looks like Tap might be staying in this game right now. Pinch runner as Jordan Fusey is going to be lifted. He's replaced by Sam Teague. So Sam Teague makes his first appearance of 2017, the 5'9 sophomore from Beaverton, Oregon, Valley Catholic High School. Dogs upgrade on the base pass with some wheels, so Teague is the new runner at first. Eden's the runner at second, Fryman the runner at third, Anthony Moore Ryan to the plate, and we will have a pitching change. That'll be all for Ryan Tapp, and even 90 pitches for the 6'8 right-hander, making his first career start. And the college baseball level, five and a third. He will leave with the bases loaded in the bottom of the sixth. We will have a new Asheville pitcher when we come back from this timeout. This is Sanford Bulldog Baseball. These are the student athletes. This is where they train. These are their homes. This is where they become Rhodes Scholars and academic All-Americans. These are the athletes they've always admired. This is where champions are crowned and moments are made. This is the Southern Conference. General Shale makes your great outdoors even better with big savings on its outdoor living collection. Everything you need to create your own backyard fire pit outdoor fireplace general shale delivers to your home and can recommend a contractor or offers easy to follow instructions to do it yourself save money now on backyard fun with general shales complete outdoor living collection hurry your great outdoors is waiting for you ryan taps afternoon is complete after five and a third. He will be responsible for all three of the current Sanford Bulldog base runners out there. But UNC Asheville will make their first call to the bullpen of this Saturday afternoon. And coming in to try to put out the fire is number 40, Jesse Jude, the six foot junior from Greensboro, North Carolina, Northwest Guilford High School. It'll be Jude that's called upon to face Mole Ryan and try to work Asheville out of the jam. And John, you've got Jude's numbers pulled up. Yeah, rough season for him last year. 13 appearances out of the bullpen, 13 in the third innings pitch, and he gave up 13 earned runs, so nearly an earned run an inning for an 8.78 ERA, eight walks and only one strikeout, and a 352 batting average against, so very hittable last year, and he's coming in and into a big situation right here, being asked of head coach Scott Friedholm to get out of a bases-loaded jam and only one out right now. 
Dogs had 92 chances with the bases loaded a year ago. As a team, they were 32 for 92. That's a 348 average as Molrine steps in and takes a fastball inside off the plate for ball one. Anthony Molrine with a big double back in the seventh of yesterday's contest, trying to come through with the bases full. In the bottom of the sixth of this contest, pulls this down the left field line, but foul into the Asheville bullpen. It evens the count one and one. Anthony Morine officially 0 for 2 today. Double play victim back in the fourth and a long fly out on the right field corner back in the second for the 6-2 freshman from Davie, Florida. 1-1, one, one, fastball stays upstairs. Morine lays off. It's two balls and one strike. Fryman at third, Eden's at second. Teague at first. Dogs trying to break this one open. Already up 2-0 as we play in the six. 2-1 to Mulrine. Sky towards left, towards the corner. Long run for Harris. Still on the run towards the track, and he makes the catch, a step in front of the track. Runner at third, Fryman tags, and he will score. It's a sacrifice fly for Anthony Mulrine. It gives the dogs a 3-0 lead. Mulrine gets the job done. A high fly ball to deep left, nearly down the line where it's 335 down the left field line. Tracked down the whole way by left fielder Cole Harris, but gets the job done, gets a, an extra run in. So the dogs lead is now 3-0. Great play from Harris. He shaded all the way over towards the left center field gap. Had to run forever towards the left field corner to make the play, but he does so and prevents Austin Edens from tagging from second. So Edens the runner at second. Sam Teague the runner at first. Two away now for Ayrton Schaefer, who takes upstairs for ball one. That run, of course, still charged to Ryan Tapp, who is still responsible for the runners on first and second. For Jesse Jude, not the worst outcome. Allows the runner on third to score, but does get that second out. 1-0 on the way to Schaefer. That is in there at the letters to even the count one and one. Schaefer with a big home run last night. And another big home run today back in the fifth. Looking for another hit this time with two outs in the sixth. This is off the fist and over our heads out of play. Make it one and two. Dogs looking for their first hit with runners in scoring position this afternoon. Also their first hit with two outs. Now so far it's been three runs on five hits for the Sanford offense. Schaefer looking to make it a multi-hit performance this afternoon. One, two, stays upstairs. And the scoreboard shows deuces. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs with two on in the bottom of the sixth. And we might be seeing quite a few long balls from Schaefer this year. He's a big guy, 6'2", 225. Schaefer with the blue socks pulled up today. A couple of Bulldogs showing some socks with their white pants this afternoon. Deuce is on the way from Jude to Schaefer, and it's off the outside corner, missing for ball three. It runs the count full, and the carousel will be in motion. Edens will get a jump start from second, and Teague will get a jump start from first with payoff coming and two away. Schaefer digs back in. Payoff on the way. This is hit hard and through the left side for a single. Edens will make the turnaround third and will score easily. And Sam Teague, who got a great jump from first, will cruise into third standing. It's a two-out RBI single off the bat of Ayrton Schaefer to give the Dogs a 4 nothing lead. So Schaefer comes through again. His first hit of the season that was not a home run, but still gets another run driven in as he drills a single through the left side of the infield. And both runners taking the extra base. As you said, Edens coming in to score and Sam T going first to third on that single. So still an opportunity to do additional damage here for Ryan Crockett. How about you, Ayrton Schaefer goes ahead and makes it a multi-hit performance. He and Brandon Fryman now each with a couple of hits to their credit this afternoon and Dogs still with a chance to do some more damage. Ryan Crockett digs in with runners in the corners and two away. Crockett against Jude, first pitch is at the letters and in there. Jude jumps in front, nothing and one. Crockett's hit the ball hard. Back in the fifth, a line out victim to Pagano and a ground ball to Pagano back in the second. 
0-1 on the way, that's off the plate away. Even to the count one and one as Ryan Crockett seeks his first hit of this 2017 campaign. And that would be a good time to do it for Ryan Crockett. No time like the present. Dogs already on top, 4 nothing, but looking for some more insurance in the sixth. 1-1 one, one stays downstairs. Two balls and one strike. As the throwback from the catcher sneaks over the head of Jude. Luckily, the second baseman Smith was there to back it up. Teague at third, Schaefer in first. Freshman third baseman Ryan Crockett at the plate for Sanford. Jude, the right-hander, comes set, comes home, chopped over the head of Tony David in foul territory down the third base side. And for the second straight hitter, Jude has worked to hit or deuces. Two balls, two strikes, and two out with two aboard. Tough task for Jude to come into a bases-loaded situation and try to strand three runners on base. Runner on third still. Ryan taps. 2-2 two, two breaking ball is in there. On the outside corner for a called strike three. Crockett is a strikeout victim, and Jude strands a couple of Bulldog base runners at first and third, respectively. But the Dogs dent the scoreboard for two more runs. They lead 4 0 through six complete. We head to the seventh next. You're watching Sanford Bulldog Baseball. The road to Omaha begins in Greenville, South Carolina. The Southern Conference Baseball Tournament comes to Floor Field May 23rd through 28th. Enjoy some great college baseball with a trip to the NCAAs on the line in a city the New York Times calls one of the top places to go in 2017. Get your tickets to the tournament and book your rooms in Yeah, That Greenville today. Experience the games. Explore the city. I think we should have taken a left at the river. Tarzan, no. Where Tarzan go? Tarzan does not know where Tarzan go. Hey, excuse me. Do you know where the waterfall is? Waterfall? No, no. Me, Tarzan. King of jungle. Why don't you want to just... If you're a couple, you know. fight over directions. It's what you do. If you want to save 15% or more on car insurance, you switch to Geico. It's what you do. You have to do that right in my ear. Back at Jolie Griffin Field. Six complete. Sanford's on top four. Nothing is. The dogs make a couple of chances across the diamond. Sam Teague, who pinch ran for Jordan Fusey, will stay in the game and play right field. New pitcher for Sanford, Mikhail Kozinov's afternoon is complete after six innings and 72 pitches. Scoreless baseball for Mikhail Kozinov. He will give way to number 23, Connor Radcliffe, the 6 3 sophomore from Pelham High School here in Birmingham, Alabama. Connor Radcliffe is the new pitcher. And we've also got a new third baseman as well. Taking over at third for Ryan Crockett is number three, Taylor Garris, the six-foot freshman from Sarasota, Florida. Cardinal Mooney High School as the new man over at the hot corner. And Blake Gardner alongside John McAfoos. John, I got us a couple more insurance runs. Go ahead and get us home over these last three innings. Uh, I'd be happy to, Blake. Thank you. Four to zero. The Sanford Bulldogs lead as we head to the top of the seventh. And Connor Radcliffe on the mound. Mikhail Kosanov's final line, five innings pitched, three hits allowed, no walks, seven strikeouts, and of course, no runs. Ryan Tapp's final line for Asheville was four and a third, five hits allowed, I'm sorry, five and a third, five hits allowed, four runs all earned, four walks, and four Ks. And of course, Jesse Jude came in, pitched two thirds of an inning, inherited three runners, allowed two of them to score, both charged to Ryan Tapp. Middle of the order, due up for Asheville, four, five, and six as Radcliffe gets ready to dig in. So Radcliffe's first appearance of the year for the Bulldogs, and he'll face cleanup hitter Joe Tijan, still looking for his first hit of the year, and he smacks one in the center. TJ Dixon on the run back towards the track. Good jump, but it's over his head. He dives. He can't quite come up with it, and into second is Tijan with a leadoff double. No sooner were the words out of your mouth. Joe Tijan looking for his first hit of 2017 before he ambushes a first pitch fastball from Connor Radcliffe and drives it over the head of TJ Dixon, and it's a leadoff extra base hit for the team leader last year for UNC Asheville, an extra base hitch, Joe Tijan. And Dixon got a good jump on that ball, but 
hit to dead center at the 390 mark. That's a, a tough area to come up with a play. He got a good read on it, but just couldn't Danny quite Wilson. race it down in time. A nice diving effort, but Tijan leads off with a double, and Asheville looking to, to get in business and try to scratch its way back into this game, down 4-0. to zero. Danny Wilson steps to the plate. Wilson right now 0 for 2, grounded out to third, struck out in the fifth. He was one of seven strikeouts for Mikhail Kozinov, and he takes a strike here to even the count at 1 and 1. Can't say enough about the job Kozinov did. 72 pitches, 48 strikes in his six innings of work. Radcliffe a season ago, 16 appearances for Sanford. 11 of those were starts. He threw 43 innings, gave up 41 earned runs. So a rough season for him, an 8.58 ERA. Struck out 40, but walked 29 in those 43 innings. As the uh, sun comes out, it's been hiding behind cloud cover for quite some time, and now it is out in full force right now. Not going to complain one bit. That's a lot better than we were anticipating a few days ago for sure. 2-2 two -two to Danny Wilson, and that one is outside. The fans wanted it for sure. The Sanford dugout wanted it, but it's a full count. Danny Wilson trying to work his way on base and start a little Asheville Bulldogs rally here. 3-2 pitch from Radcliffe is high, and that's an easy take, and it's ball four, and Asheville is in business. The two, first two runners of the inning are aboard. Second straight frame that... Two straight have reached for UNC Asheville. First two reached back in the sixth before being stranded by Mikhail Kozinov. Now an extra base hit and a walk, and Asheville's offense back in business. See if they can cash in here on the top of the seventh with Chris Trost. Trost has flown out twice so far, once to left, once to ninth. Looking for his first hit of the season. If he gets it, it would be a big one and help Asheville crawl back into this game a little bit. Tijan on second, Wilson on first. Throws down, 0 and 1 in the count. And that one is in there for a called strike, and quickly Radcliffe jumps ahead of Trost, 0 and 2. It was a good night for the Sanford bullpen last night in relief of Jesse McCord, only one run allowed. We'll try to do the same tonight. When the bullpen came into the game last night, Sanford actually trailed 1-0, to zero, kept it there until the big six-run seventh inning. Here they've got a 4-0 lead to work with, and this is a ground ball in the hole, and it's a base hit, the first of the season for Chris Trost. Holding it third will be Tijan, but now Asheville really is in business. The bases are loaded, and nobody is out. Tough break there for Radcliffe. He didn't make a terrible pitch there on 0-2, but it probably caught a bit too much the plate as he was well ahead of Trost and gave Trost something he could get his hands through, and Kind of fought it off the inside part of the barrel. Trost is able to muscle it through the left side for a single, and it's two hits and three hitters. Plus that walk has loaded the bases for Asheville, bringing the tying run to the plate here in the seventh. And it'll be Andrew Friedholm coming up into the bases loaded situation with nobody out. We talked a little bit about his struggles last year, an 097 batting average and 72 at bats. He does have a hit to his name today in the third inning. He raced a single, struck out looking in the fifth. So one for two for Friedholm. Biggest at bat of the young season so far for him. He's behind 0-1 in the count. Takes that one a little outside to even the count at 1-1. One one. Friedholm last year, seven RBIs. 13 total bases. Chance for his first couple of runs driven in of the season right here. Tijan on third, Wilson on second, and Chris Trost on first. The 1-1 one -one pitch is high and inside. And head in the count now is Friedholm, 2-1. Tough spot for Radcliffe. Got to come to Friedholm right here. Don't want to fall behind 3-1 and one and risk forcing in a run with a base on balls. And here's the 2-1 pitch, and this one is popped up. Great pitch there by Connor Radcliffe. This is not going to do any damage for Asheville. Camped under it is Fryman, and he puts it away, and one out in the inning now. And Friedholm does not get the job done and leaves three runners right where they were. Huge pitch from Radcliffe as he forces the infield fly. And now all of a sudden you're one pitch away from working out of this with a scoreless flame with maybe a ground ball as Friedholm is taken care of. 
The baton falls to Kyle Carruthers to try to get UNC Asheville on the board. Yeah, if you're Connor Radcliffe, can't ask for a better outcome than that. Bases loaded, no outs, forcing a harmless pop-up. The first pitch to Carruthers is fouled off into the netting. Carruthers grounded into a double play in the third inning. Hit a single in the sixth inning. That was his first hit of the year. So one for four on the young season for Kyle Carruthers. Struck out a couple of times last night as well. That one is outside. Just barely, one and one. Connor Radcliffe trying to get out of a big jam he's got himself into by allowing a double and then a walk and then a single to the first three batters he's faced on the season. Here's a ground ball. It could be two. Fryman's got it. Throws over to Dixon for one. They're not going to get the run at first. So they do retire a Trost at second. But coming in to score is Joe Tijan. And so Asheville is on the board for their first run of the day. Yeah, that was going to be a tough turn for Fryman there. Working towards the six hole, he would have had to come up with it very cleanly and get it quickly out of his glove to have any chance at getting the speedy Carruthers. And you'll trade the out for a run on that play right there. UNC Asheville works their way on the board. Sanford still with a three-run lead and one out away from working out of a two-on-two-out jam now. So it's a 6-4 fielder's choice for Kyle Carruthers. Derek Smith comes up looking to do some additional damage. Now two outs in the inning. Radcliffe, if he can get out of this inning with just allowing one run after loading the bases with nobody out, I think he'll be pretty pleased with his effort. Smith grounded out and reached on an error. This one is fouled back. Evens the count at one and one. Top of the seventh, Sanford leading four to one. Danny Wilson on third base. Kyle Carruthers on first base. One one pitch coming from Radcliffe. And that's a little too far outside, two and one. So Derek Smith ahead in the count. If Smith were to reach, it would be back to the top of the order. For UNC Asheville, Carmine Pagano, the shortstop, on deck. And there's a called strike. Evens the count at two and two. So Radcliffe just one strike away from getting out of this tough situation with just one run allowed. Joe Tijan led off with that double to dead center that TJ Dixon could, couldn't quite catch up with. Danny Wilson walked. That's down the line, but foul. Following the walk to Danny Wilson, Chris Trost with a single to the left side. That loaded the bases. Friedholm came in, popped up to Fryman at short. And Carruthers, the fielder's choice that scored Joe Tijian to get Asheville their first run of the game. So it's Derek Smith right now facing Connor Radcliffe, a 2-2 count. And that pitch is low and in the dirt, and we're going to have a full count here. So a good battle between Radcliffe and Smith. Carruthers gets a head start at first with a full count pitch coming and two away. Smith last night 0 for 3 with a walk. As we mentioned, 0 for 2 today. Did reach on an error. And here is a full count. And that ball is just foul down the third baseline. Just foul. And that likely would have scored two runs if it were a fair ball. Good call that time from Hope umpire Terrence Mobley. That ball was, gosh, maybe eight, nine inches Foul that third base bag, took a sharp turn towards foul territory just before getting 90 feet down the line. So Fried, or Smith rather, basically one foot away from making this a four to three game right there. Now that one he does yank foul, that one not quite as close as the last one. A good battle here between Smith and Radcliffe. Smith has pulled everything in this AB. Be a good chance for Connor Radcliffe to Maybe throw something off speed towards the outside corner. He's trying to find the grip on that slider. If he's not comfortable with the slider, then maybe try to locate that fastball more towards the outer half, see if he can get Smith to roll over. And Mul Ryan setting up outside. Off calls time. You'll notice Connor Radcliffe actually grips when he's in the stretch. More of an off speed grip, so he doesn't have to dig into his glove when he comes set to try to find that grip. Mul Ryan's going to go out and have a word. 
with Radcliffe. Discussed their strategy here. As you said, Smith's been pulling everything. Dogs do have an arm or two ready in the bullpen. So another full count pitch here, and it's a swung on and missed by Derek Smith. Radcliffe gets out of that bases loaded. No out jam, allowing just one run. He pounds his fist into his glove. He's happy about his performance. So it's 4-1 to one Sanford. We will head to the bottom of the seventh. You're watching Sanford Baseball on the Sanford Sports Network. Joe Lee Griffin Field, we head to the bottom of the seventh as the fans enjoying the seventh inning stretch. Sanford enjoying this game as well with a four to one lead. Four runs coming on six hits for the home Bulldogs. One run on five hits for the visiting Bulldogs. And Connor Radcliffe got himself into a little bit of a jam there in the top half of the seventh inning. Double walk and single to load the bases. And gets out of it, allowing just one run. And we will have another pitching change for the Asheville Bulldogs. It is number 47, Joe Zayats, the right-handed pitcher. Zayats number 47 is a 6, 5'11", 180 pound Richard Jr. from Columbia, Maryland. He comes into the contest. He's a bat and an arm for UNC Asheville, or at least he was last year. Zayats had an ERA of 2.25 in three appearances on the mound. 20 innings, they were all starts. He surrendered 20 hits, five earned runs, struck out 16, and walked just two, while also making 20 ABs and hitting 300 as well in UNC Asheville's 2016 campaign. He makes his first appearance on the mound against the Dogs in the bottom of the seventh. And the first pitch from Kevin Williams is off of his Zayats's glove. Is he gonna beat it out? Yes, he is. The ball was dropped by first baseman Danny Williams, but I think it would have been a, he would have been safe anyway. So it's going to be an infield single off Zayats's glove for Kevin Williams. Tough break there from Zayats right into the contest. Smith got a great jump working up the middle. Would have gotten to that baseball, but it goes off the glove of Zayats and no time to recover from Smith. It's going to be an infield single for Williams, the second time he's reached in this contest this afternoon. So T.J. Dixon back to the plate, back to the top of the order for Sanford. It'll be the fourth time through the order. Dixon led off the first inning for Sanford with a base hit. He's flown out twice since then, and he's going to put down a bunt. Pretty good one. They have a play at second, but they're going to elect to go to first and retire Dixon, so it is a sacrifice bunt for T.J. Dixon and Kevin Williams Jr. into scoring position at second base. Yeah, it goes as a sacrifice bunt. TJ was really trying to bunt for more of a hit there. He tried to drag it with him up the first base side. Ideally, you want to push that past the pitcher towards the second baseman Smith and try to make him field it and try to beat it out. Instead, Zayats is able to cut it off, and it will go as a sack bunt as Williams is able to move from first to second and give Brandon Fryman an RBI chance. Guy that is two for two today and has another chance to come up with another hit that would likely give the dogs another run. The only blip on Fryman's stat sheet today was the caught stealing, but really that was uh, supposed to be a hit and run and Dixon just didn't make contact. So Fryman got left out to dry a little bit, but as you said, two for two, had a sacrifice bunt in the first inning. He's played a good short stop. And he's gonna put down a bunt here to the left side. Zayats has it. And so another sacrifice bunt. And now 
TJ Dixon over to third. Yeah, second straight time we've seen a Bulldog hitter trying to bunt for a hit as Fryman tried to push that towards the third base side, but the pitch was a little bit too far outside for him to get the barrel to it and try to angle it down the third baseline. And instead, a little bit too close to Zayats, who's able to jump off the mound and make the play over to first. Williams once again advances 90 feet, and Troy Dixon has a chance at an RBI shot. Looking for his first hit of the game. So some good fielding from Joe Zayats, who is getting his first appearance of the season and has been put to work early. The first pitch of this season is hit right back to him off his glove, and now he's had two bunts come his way, and he's handled both of those well as he gets Troy Dixon to swing and miss the first pitch here. Troy Dixon trying to knock his brother TJ in, who's on third base right now. There are two outs in the inning. Bottom seven with Sanford leading 4-1. to one. Troy Dixon's had a rough day at the plate, 0 for 3 with two Ks right now. His last at bat, he thought he got hit by a pitch. Ump ruled it a strikeout. Casey Dunn came out, had a long conversation with home plate umpire Terrence Mobley. So Troy Dixon looking for a little bit of redemption now, but behind 0 and 2 in the count. Here is the 0-2 pitch, and that one's very high. Zayat's a junior from Columbia, Maryland, Oakland Mills High School. And a swing and a miss. He's going to get out of the inning after allowing a leadoff infield single. No harm. Two sacrifice bunts and 8K. So we will head to the 8th. It is 4-1, to one, Sanford leading UNC Asheville. You're watching Sanford Baseball on the Sanford Sports Network. This is Lauren. These are her first roommates, her first car, and her very first health insurance plan, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama. Even at her age, she's not taking her health for granted. Her affordable health plan includes a routine annual checkup, apps, and programs that fit her lifestyle. Lauren may be just starting out, but with us, She's already got peace of mind. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama. We cover what matters. Find out how we can cover you for the first time. Hi, I'm John I. Marino, Commissioner of the Southern Conference. With the full cooperation of our presidents and chancellors, the conference has created the SOCON Academic Exchange, a cooperative structure designed to benefit our academic efforts. Three primary initiatives will be the collaboration of international study programs, a leadership development program to benefit faculty and staff, and an undergraduate research forum. For more information on the SOCON Academic Exchange, visit SOCONsports.com. Back for the eighth inning at Joe Lee Griffin Field, and another pitching change for the Sanford Bulldogs. It's going to be a guy we saw last night. And another new face for the Bulldogs. Number 24, Aaron Baldwin. Baldwin, number 24, six foot five, 195 pound junior from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Transferred in from LSU Eunice Community College where he led the number one ranked junior college team in the country with a 2.63 earned run average. And he tossed up a scoreless seventh a little less than 24 hours ago. And one inning of work out of the bullpen looking for a scoreless eighth on this Saturday afternoon today. He's got some heat in that fastball. He'll try to be a late inning presence out of the Sanford bullpen this season. He comes into the eighth with a three run lead. And for UNC Asheville, it'll be the top of their order trying to make something happen here as they're down three runs with only Six outs left. It'll be Pagano leading off, Cole Harris, and then Brandon Lankford. Score update from Sanford softball. Tough break for the dogs as Jacksonville comes up with a late run in extra innings to take a 9-8 victory over Sanford softball. Sanford back in action in about 90 minutes or so. They'll take on Troy at 5.30. And the first pitch from Baldwin. High and tight to Carmine Pagana, who's 0 for 3 so far on the day. Fly out, ground out, and strike out. 1-0, also high, so quickly Pagano ahead in the count, 2-0. Baldwin looking a little stiff through the first two deliveries. Steps off the mound, see if he can make an adjustment here. Try to pull down that release point just a touch and work back 
into the zone after two straight high misses. There we go. That one's in there for a strike. For Connor Radcliffe, it was one inning pitched, two hits, one walk, one strikeout, one run earned. And the 2-1 pitch from Baldwin, and this is hit in the left. Coming in as Williams Jr., is he going to be able to get there? Yes, he is, as he dives forward and makes another stellar catch, and he's really flashing some leather out there in left field. Great play by Williams. He got a good jump on it. That ball was off the end of the bat of Carmine Pagano, and Williams read it nicely and was able to get to it before it hit the left field turf out there. You mentioned Williams has made a couple of sterling defensive efforts out in left this afternoon and makes another one right there to take away a hit from Carmine Pagano. Not the hardest hit ball, but a great read there from Williams as he's sprinting in full speed right off the bat and lays out and makes another fantastic catch. He made one in the first inning at the wall to, to rob Pagano of extra base hits. And Pagano's gotten 0 for 4 today, and, man, he's had some bad luck. Cole Harris now steps to the plate. He's 0 for 3 right now with 2 Ks. And Harris quickly ahead in the count, 3-0. Baldwin to deliver the 3-0 pitch. And that one's low and an easy take for Cole Harris, who's aboard with a four-pitch walk. So Harris finds his way aboard for the first time this afternoon. Brings in Langford. A couple other scores to look at, courtesy of our Papa John scoreboard across the Southern Conference. Plenty of offense in Macon, but it's all on one side. The Mercer Bears 12, Maryland Eastern Shore nothing in the top of the seventh. Already a final today from Johnson City, Tennessee. Central Michigan battles back in that series. They take an 8-7 win away from the Bucks of ETSU. Also another final to report. Out of Wilmington, South Carolina, the number 24-ranked club in the country. UNC Wilmington sneaks by VMI 4-3. And it's the third baseman, Brandon Langford, stepping to the plate for his fourth at bat of the day. Takes a ball, and Will Ryan going to take a quick breather to go talk to Baldwin. Tyler Shroud out as well, out of the Sanford dugout, as Sanford does have some action down in the bullpen. Tough to see above the right field wall, but. Sanford with a little bit of action. Asheville down the left field line has some bullpen action as well. That's Justin Woods who's warming up down the left field line. So Woods likely to come in to pitch the bottom of the eighth for Asheville. And as you said, from our vantage point, we really can't tell who's warming up for Sanford because of the right field wall, but somebody is indeed throwing down there. Should say the Merrill Lynch bullpen down the right field line. As Baldwin gets ready to go back to work. And he delivers a strike to Brandon Langford. Cole Harris standing at first base after a four-pitch walk. Baldwin retired the first batter of the inning, Carmi Pagano, on a soft liner to the left. And a great play by Kevin Williams, Jr. There's a big swing and a miss from Langford there. Sanford looking to start the season with a 2-0 record after a 6-2 win last night with all six runs coming in the seventh inning. Some off speed that's taken for a ball, 2-2. Two two. We'll have the finale of this series tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m. It'll be Blake and I again for that one. Sanford hopes to be looking for a sweep in that one as this is a ground ball hit to Fryman. They might turn two over to Dixon. Dixon's got it. A little late on the pivot and throw to Eden, so beating it out by a step is Langford, but they do get the lead runner at second base. It's up break for the dogs. That's a bang bang play over there at first as Langford was hustling all the way down the line. Good feed from Fryman to Dixon for one. Dixon's throw was just a little bit high to Austin Eden's. Might have influenced the call of first base umpire CJ Burdett. As it stands, it's a fielder's choice put out. Now one on with two away in the top of the eighth. Tijan back into the box, coming off of his first hit of the season. It was a double to dead center over the head of T.J. Dixon. Tijan would eventually come around to score on a fielder's choice. The only run of the game so far for the Asheville Bulldogs. So Baldwin 
Delivers the 1 0, and big swing from Tijan. Fouled back, well out of play. Good crowd here today, Joe Lee Griffin Field. Not quite as much of a packed house as it was last night. I'm sure some fans will migrate over for men's basketball following this game. And there's a called strike. So Baldwin ahead in the count now, one and two on Tijan. Asheville down to their final four outs of this game and three runs to needed to tie the game. Tijan trying to make something happen for the Bulldogs right here and he takes one high. Two and two. Danny Wilson awaiting on deck, hoping for an opportunity himself. And Baldwin delivers the 2-2 pitch and a swing and a miss. He got him swinging. And that's no harm done. One walk in the inning. Nothing coming offensively for the UNC Asheville Bulldogs. So we will head to the bottom of the eighth. Sanford continues to lead by three. It's four to one at Joe Lee Griffin Field. You're watching Sanford Baseball on the Sanford Sports Network. Discovering new things is good. For example, you may discover that the best bank in town isn't a bank. Bottom of the eighth, we go. Sanford still hanging on to that four to one lead. And we'll have another pitching change as we expected for the UNC Asheville Bulldogs. It is number nine, Justin Woods, a senior from Waynesville, North Carolina. Woods made three appearances on the mound last year, record of 0-1, ERA of 3.86, and four and two-thirds innings of work. Surrendered two runs on three hits with three strikeouts and three walks as well. He actually made more appearances at the plate as a hitter. Started 16 games and 33 appearances, hit 211, 15 hits in 71 at-bats. Another two-way guy on this UNC Asheville roster. He'll make an appearance out of the full windup. The right-hander on the mound set to work at the bottom of the eighth. Fourth pitcher of the day for the UNC Asheville Bulldogs. Ryan Tapp, four earned runs allowed and four and a third. Jesse Jude and Joe Zayats combined for one and two thirds innings pitched. Two hits allowed, no runs, two strikeouts. So now Justin Woods comes in for the bottom of the eighth trying to keep the score right where it's at. And leading off for Samford will be first baseman Austin Edens. Edens will be his fourth plate appearance of the game. He has walked all three times he has come to the plate. And his most recent plate appearance, he came around to score in the sixth inning. So Edens off to a good start this year. Two hits last night. His reach based all three times he's come to the plate tonight. Looking to do it again as he leads off the bottom of the eighth for the Bulldogs. And he takes a call strike right down the middle. That one a little bit outside, evening the count at one and one. Justin Woods, the senior righty, delivers the one-one pitch to Edens. He smashes this one, but it is right to the second baseman, Derek Smith. So Edens retired for the first time this afternoon on a 4-3 ground out. Good play there from Smith. The dig in his heels. He didn't back up. Didn't have to charge it either. It was a shot, but he got a nice clean hop off the dirt right in front of him and had plenty of time to retire. Eden's running down the first baseline for one away in the bottom of the eighth. And here comes Sam Teague for 
his first plate appearance of the year. Pinch ran for Jordan Fusey in the sixth inning. I don't be surprised to see a lot of this this year. Taylor Garris checking in at the hot corner and Sam Teague checking in later in contest as a defensive replacement out in right field trying to give the dogs some speed to cover all left, center, and right late in contest. First pitch from Woods to Teague in the dirt and past the catcher to the backstop. Teague ready for the 1-0 pitch and it's way outside. And Teague ahead 2-0 in her, his first plate appearance of the season and going out to have a quick word with Woods as Andrew Friedholm the catcher through the first two balls not close to the zone there. Fusey who Teague replaced was over two today. A liner to right field that was caught and a fielder's choice. He did walk in the sixth inning which is when Teague pinch ran for him and Teague takes a big cut there swinging a miss. Teague did not play last year, was sitting out after hip surgery. Did play the year before that. Came on a few times as a defensive replacement and also did a fair share of pinch running as well. Using that good speed. And Teague takes a big swing and a miss and down on strikes he goes. So two quickly retired by the righty Justin Woods. Catcher Anthony Mulrun. Challenge fastball that time from Woods went up in the zone twice and was able to get it by Sam Teague. And so far, you're right. Quality work out of the pen from Justin Woods. Two up and two down. <laughs> Mulrine steps to the plate. Knocked in a run in the sixth inning with a sacrifice fly to right field. Takes one way inside for the first ball. Flew out to right field and foul territory in the second inning. Hit into a double play in the fourth before a sacrifice fly. That one's fouled back into the netting to even the count at one and one. Sanford scored one in the third, one in the fifth, and two in the sixth. Asheville scored their only run in the top of the seventh. As Mulrine fouls another one back into the net. Seven hits for Samford, five for Asheville. One error for the home team. Samford looking to jump out to a 2-0 record. They're just three outs away from doing so. And this one is hit high and deep by Mulrine. Harris has got a beat on it. He's at the wall in the corner, and he tracks it down and makes the catch. So good contact from Mulrine but it hangs up on the track. So it's three up and three down for Sanford. We'll go to the top of the ninth. The Sanford Bulldogs just three outs away. They lead four to one. You're watching Sanford Baseball on the Sanford Sports Network. Game day brings out the best in all of us. At Regions, every day is game day. Head to the top of the ninth at Joe Lee Griffin Field. Sanford leading 4-1, to one, just three outs away from taking their second consecutive victory against the UNC Asheville Bulldogs. And on the mound now for Sanford, it'll be number 29, Wyatt Burns, the right-handed junior, looking for his second save in as many opportunities. Burns, the 5'10 junior from Pinson Valley High School in Pinson, Alabama, coming on for your right, his second save in as many days. Had a four-out save in Friday night's contest, looking for another one. Right here, a member of the preseason stopper of the year watch list and a second team all Southern Conference preseason selection. Had a sterling year last year in this role and is coming back for more of the same as the closer out of this Bulldog bullpen. 
three outs away from picking up save number two in as many contests, and he will see two, three, and four, I believe. Where are we in the order for UNC Asheville? Uh, we will start in the five hole. Danny Wilson leading off. Five, six, and seven as our live stats are trailing our live action just a little bit. Burns last year, 40 strikeouts and just 15 walks and his 42 and a third innings pitched. As you said, a preseason stopper of the year candidate. Wilson takes outside for ball one. So Sanford just three outs away from securing their second win in as many days to start the season. Hoping to be in a position to sweep UNC Asheville tomorrow. This one's hit down the third base line, but foul. Wyatt among the nation's leaders in appearances last year, and all those appearances gave up just nine leadoff hits. Tomorrow's pitching matchup, at least projected right now, it will be Spencer Orr for UNC Asheville, Stephen Jones for Sanford. Stephen Jones gets another run at it. Donk returned three starting pitchers off of last year's squad. We'll see two of them this weekend. Saw Mikhail Kozinov today. We'll see Stephen Jones tomorrow, Sunday afternoon. This one's hit hard in the center, but TJ Dixon's got a beat on it, and he retires. Danny Wilson for the first out, and Sanford now just two outs away. Good wood from Wilson that time. Went down in the zone to slice that towards right center, but Dixon had a beat on it all the way and was able to corral it out there in center for out number one. The designated hitter. Chris Trost. One for three on the day. Two flyouts and a single in the seventh inning. Going against the righty, Wyatt Burns. First pitch in there for a strike. Andrew Friedholm to follow. Nashville down to their last hope here. Just two outs away. One-one pitch hit up the middle, right back to Wyatt Burns. He snags it, will run towards first, underhand to Edens, and easy out there. So just one out away now. It'll be up to Andrew Friedholm, the catcher. Nice snag by Burns that time. Ball right back up the middle. He's able to stab his left hand at it and get a glove to it, and from there just able to jog it over. And been a good start to the top of the night for the Bulldog closer, Wyatt Burns. He'll see a pinch hitter to try to close this contest out in the top of the night. So rather than Friedholm, it'll be number 25, Joe Gruska. Gruska did appear in last night's game. He pinch hit and appeared in left field. He was 0 for 1, left three runners on base. Here he'll come up with no runners on base, but he's the last hope for Asheville. He needs to make something happen if they want to stay in this game. Wyatt Burns last night came in with two outs in the eighth inning, inherited three runners. Bases loaded, got out of that. Had an easy ninth inning, earned the save. Today he gets to come in, start with a clean inning in the ninth and a three-run lead. And quickly two outs, and now just two strikes away. A one pitch to Gruska, a little outside. Good spot there from Burns. He's got fastball and slider. They both move in opposite directions. Two-seamer's got a little cut back towards the right-hander. Slider, of course, sweeps across the zone and tried to go back door with it that time, just barely missing the outside corner. This one has flown in the left. Williams has a beat on it. This could be the ball game. Williams under it, puts it away, and Sanford defeats UNC Asheville for the second consecutive day, two to one. Four to one, make that. Seven hits, four runs for Sanford. Five hits, one run for UNC Asheville. So Sanford, two and oh. UNC Asheville, 0 oh and two. The third game will be back here at Joe Lee Griffin Field tomorrow afternoon. We're going to take a quick break, and Blake and I will come back for a quick post-game wrap-up. You're watching Sanford Baseball on the Sanford Sports Network. Discovering new things is good. For example, you may discover that the best bank in town isn't a bank. At Express Oil Change and Tire Engineers, we believe in service. Maintenance service, tire service, repair service, and most importantly, customer service. 
We believe in treating our customers with respect and integrity while offering all the services you need for your car. Most of all, at Express Oil Change and Tire Engineers, we believe in keeping cars on the road, keeping families safe, and keeping you coming back whenever the need arises. If you're entering a Division I college or university on or after August 1st of 2016, there are some new academic requirements you need to know. First, you have to graduate high school within four consecutive years from the start of ninth grade. And in those four years, you have to pass 16 core courses. Next, your 16 core courses must be taken in a specific area of study at a specific time during high school. Your 16 core courses will determine your core GPA, which must be 2.3 or higher to be eligible to practice, compete, or receive an athletic scholarship during your freshman year in college. Ten of those 16 have to be taken before your seventh semester. Those 10 courses are locked in, meaning you can't retake them to improve your GPA. You must also earn a combined ACT and SAT score that matches your core course GPA on the Division I sliding scale. It's important to build a team that you can depend on for guidance and support. So go talk to your guidance counselor and ask them to join your team. We all were in your shoes just a few years ago, so we know what it takes to become a Division I student athlete. But more importantly, we know what it means to make our dreams become a reality. You can too. Back at Joe Lee Griffin Field, John McApoose alongside Blake Gardner in a 4-1 to one victory for the Sanford Bulldogs over the UNC Asheville Bulldogs. Their second victory in as many days. A good effort all around today for Sanford. Lineup contributes. Great pitching performance from Mikhail Kozinov. Yeah, second straight day we've seen Sanford a Sanford starting pitcher really come out there and control the zone early. Yesterday, Jesse McCord looked very good in five and two-thirds innings. Today, Mikhail Kozinov, six complete innings, and he only needed 72 pitches. He worked ahead of 61% of the batters he faced with first pitch strikes and really was very efficient. No walks, kept a lot of free bases in check. Seven strikeouts and surrendered just three hits. And then behind him, Radcliffe and Burns are able to extend over the last nine outs and close it out for the dogs. So once again, starting pitching, a key performance for the dogs, and it propels them to a series win and a chance to go for a sweep tomorrow afternoon. And the offense coming from some new faces yet again. Kevin Williams, a solo home run in the third. Ayrton Schaefer, a solo home run in the fifth. Williams also made a couple really nice plays out in left field. Good defense, good bullpen action. Kozinov finished with five innings pitched, three hits, seven strikeouts. Radcliffe gave up the one run on two hits. Walked one, struck out one. Aaron Baldwin, one strikeout, one walk uh, in one inning of work. And Wyatt Burns, a quick one, two, three, ninth for his second save of the year. Yeah, no doubt. Good job all the way around from Sanford. Tough break for Ryan Tapp, who made his first career start for UNC Asheville. His line ends with five and a third, five hits, four runs, four strikeouts, and four walks. As his bullpen couldn't bail him out of a bases loaded jam there in the bottom of the six. Dogs ended up scoring two runs, both of which ended up being charged to Ryan Tapp. But... The Dogs lost a lot of power in, from their lineup over the past couple of years. Only two starters returned from a team that won 35 games a year ago, and it was some of the new faces supplying the long balls today between Schaefer and Williams, and then Schaefer with another RBI hit as well, propelling the Dogs' offense that needed just seven hits to come out with the win today. Yeah, it looks like some of those new guys are going to definitely be power threats for the Sanford team. You can throw Anthony Mulrine into that mix too. He might have some power for UNC Asheville. Five hits. Spread out amongst five different players. Two doubles, Langford and Tijan, each doubling. Tijan scored the only run of the game for Asheville. And then three singles. Carmine Pagano, leadoff hitter, was 0 for 4. One of the most difficult 0 for 4, as you can imagine. Two great plays by Williams. A great play by Fryman at short, too. So a tough 0 for 4 for him. And as you said, Ryan Tapp, the, the final line might be a little discouraging for him, but I think he pitched a little bit better than that line indicates. Yeah, tap with a good performance. Overshadowed a bit by Kozinov, but nothing to be ashamed of. And your first career start for Ryan Tapp. Exciting news for Sanford fans as they get a chance to go for the sweep tomorrow with returning starter Stephen Jones, the big sophomore, has a chance to make it three consecutive solid starting pitching appearances for Sanford. Quick game today, just two hours, 23 minutes. 378 is our official listed attendance. Coming up. Media-wise for Sanford Sports, as we've told you, our final game of this series tomorrow at 1 o'clock. We'll go live around 12.55 here on YouTube, and it'll be Blake and I on the call again. 
course, we've got men's basketball coming up this evening, 6 p.m. Central Time. You can listen to Blake, call that on the radio, 99-1 the game. We'll also be streaming it on ESPN3. Ryan Brown will be on play-by-play. -play. Rick Cleveland, color analyst, and Hattie Brees as the bench reporter. Just a few home games left for men's basketball, so if you're around, you're going to want to get out to them. As Blake said earlier, we've got the Academy vouchers for today, so if you go to Academy Sports, you can get a voucher for four free tickets. Next Tuesday, we'll have a doubleheader softball and baseball. There's some overlap there, but we'll be streaming both of them. Softball, 3 o'clock start time. We'll go live at 2.55. James Hardy will have the call for that one. It'll be Sanford versus Kennesaw State. And an hour later at 4 o'clock, Blake and I will have baseball here at Joe Lee Griffin Field, Sanford against Troy. And then men's basketball neck back again next Wednesday. And once again, Radio 99 won the game with Blake Gardner and video on ESPN3 with Chris Stewart, Bill Jones, and Hattie Brees. Remember, for updates on all 17 Bulldog sports teams, you can follow us online. It's Sanford University Athletics on Facebook, Sanford underscore sports on Twitter, and the official online home for your Sanford Bulldogs is SanfordSports.com. I'd like to thank our crew today, Sam Bush up in the booth with us, Ethan Sanders running our camera today, and, of course, the final score, Sanford 4, UNC Asheville 1. Until next time, for Sanford University, on behalf of Blake Gardner, I'm John McAfoos saying thank you for joining us and reminding you that together we are Sanford Strong.